Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode, what is it, 26 of Wrist Shot Week. It's been, it feels like it's been such a long time since we've done one of these, but it's, uh, it's good to be back. Welcome, one and all. I'm going to get into the chat and say hi. There's already like 50 of you waiting in the background, so I feel very humbled. Uh, a question from Steve Jobs before the show even starts. He asks if I'm going to be doing a full review of the, um, the SPB 143. I definitely will. Very soon, uh, Chaz from the Berg, Brent, Rickon watches Turbo T2. I see Winding watches B Dev, The Rancher. Welcome, uh, Thomas Burnett, Matthew, Dear Artifact, B Dev, Philip Savage, Mark P. There's so many. Dr. Bob, Eric Bell. We can talk about Eric Bell in a second. He's had a, a bit of a horrifying experience over the course of this week. Uh, oh, it's great. See the canoe. Welcome, Sam Ray. I don't even know where to start. Okay, let's um, first thing before we even get started we've got the og logo up thought that'd be a nice change of pace i've got a cool little image that we can play on repeat for a while as i get into the chat and say hi to you all uh, this comes courtesy from russell we've got some really cool images that we're going to be sharing later on and i don't know if this is going to work very well let me know if you can hear me comment one in the chat <laughs> i don't know why i always ask that but it might as well be consistent I've only done it like 28 times by now um yeah, so the theme, the importance of wearing watches you love, that uh, that came out of nowhere. Could be good. It could be a good subject. It would be nice to hear your thoughts, opinions, perspectives around the subject too. Okay, awesome. You can hear me. Thank you, everyone. Goodness, there's so many of you here. Hans and Flip and Zippo, and I see Matt Smith and Raymond. I think I said hi. The Chidge, watch yourself. Scott Wexland. Wow, it's nuts. So yeah, this is the, uh, the Zeitwerk Phantom and uh lumen you know it's, it's crazy it glows in the dark and there were a few things that really caught my attention i've got it running on loop at the moment but when you slow down the frames and have a look at this just as it's about to tick over to 12 watch the number nine how it has a moment where it's cocked into position a little bit i don't know if you can see that very well but the nine the nine on the far right hand side it's fascinating how it just gets into position there before it switches and the beauty the beauty is that as it hits the 60, uh, now, if I just frame by frame flick through it, you'll see that as it hits that point, so the transition happens, and it's just seamless. It's amazing. It's an amazing, amazing machine. I think it's good to feature this as a, as a little video clip. This is awesome. I think we need to do more of these, Russell. I think you're only going to catch up with the show in about an hour's time. Zyphoic Phantom, I don't even know how many of these they made, but it's awesome. Let's get into the... Submissions, uh, there were like over 150 this time around, and it was a bit daunting, but <laughs> we got there in the end. And it's going to be a good talk around this theme of the importance of wearing watches you love. I, I it kind of, the cover photo actually spoke to me more than anything else. It really grabbed my attention, and I think it'll be good to talk around that. And uh, there's so many more. I see Watch Lounge and who else? Uh, Winding Watches and Moose Man. Welcome. Many of you are tagging me in the chat. Thank you. If you would like to get my attention, tag me, ask a question. You know how it is. And we can uh, <laughs> at least pause until I've finished, Roger. Uh, that's so good. Thanks for that. Um, and we haven't even started the show and we're already doing the innuendos. Right. So let's get in. Uh, start with. Oh, Sam Ray, don't worry about it. Uh, I only, I think I saved posts until about midday today. So there were a few that I've probably missed. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got quite a lot to go through. Uh, I think I reduced the 150 down to something a bit more manageable, but yeah, it should be good. So let's just quickly address what I'm wearing. Uh, wearing my most basic, simplest watch. Thought it would be quite fitting since 36 millimeters is now back in fashion, right? I can't believe that we haven't done a live show since the uh, the releases that happened, like the, the Rolex News and Watches and Wonders. That that all happened, and that's been and gone. So, yeah, it's a good talking point around this, especially when we get to the cover in a moment. I see Megan joining us. I think it's currently 7 o'clock in the world where she is in the morning. This is a Sunday morning. You guys and the commitments, I don't know how you do it. I really don't. Uh, all of you who are joining in from wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for being a part, for sending in the watches as we will be seeing the variety is off the charts, all the stuff we like and more. All right, so W10, it's my favorite field watch. And I thought this would be good for the nerds. This is something that um, I decided to do today for a change. This is on a Omega OEM uh, strap that came supplied with my, my 57 Seamaster. So it's, it's sort of a, a NATO, but it's got the Zulu keepers, right? So... 
you notice that it's just a normal wearing field watch until you turn it around and you see that it's on a doesn't have a tang like you would expect tang and buckle system and that's because i've fitted a deployant to it i thought wouldn't it be nice to see a deployant on a nato strap would it work i don't know let's give it a test and it did and it's actually damn cool it, it fits so well uh, and it's you know if you're someone who's really retentive when it comes to um worrying about your watches falling off your wrist you know one of the spring bars breaking <laughs> and the watch coming loose the whole idea of the nato being a more secure way of wearing your watches with the deployant you would never have to worry about the security the beauty of this is that it has a um a flathead screw that, that locks in place so this thing's not going anywhere it's all screwed in the whole system so that's pretty cool i uh, thought that was quite a funny thing for all of us to uh, to get into this is like serious nerdery you know just when you're waking up uh and I, I should also say that I woke up a couple of minutes ago. I kind of slept in a bit this evening. Uh, and what's on the table, what's going to be drunk, drinked today is the uh, standard, the old faithful Glen Morangie original. Yeah, that's going to be good. Got the coffee, got everything in line. Let's, uh, <laughs> you will create a new hype. Yeah, I mean, talk about deployments on NATOs. The only watch I've ever seen with a deployment on the NATO, I think, is an Oris the RS 65s, they have NATOs that have this feature to it. I just thought it was good fun. It makes no sense. It's really unnecessary, but it does add a bit of substance to the watch. And I thought, you know, what the hell? But we are talking about 36 millimeter watches, <laughs> breaking the rules. <laughs> so let's get to the cover photo watch. And before we even address it, um, sometimes the submissions, you know, you, you recognize the people who send in their watches. It can be maybe twice every, once every two episodes or whatever else. And then sometimes you get viewers, new time viewers who send in watches or they've been watching for a long time and they decide to send in something. And instead of writing a description about the watch and why they love it so much and everything there, this just came in as a separate email just with the title of the watch. And that was it. Oh, dear. Magic mouse. You can't be acting up on me already, darling. I might have to plug you in. <laughs> uh, so this is the uh, IWC Pilot 36 reference. Wait for it. IW, <clears throat> IW324010, I hope you got that. But it's such a fitting watch for, you know, the occasion of when we're talking about the whole watches you love and sizes, the new 36 uh, Explorer that came out and watches seem to be turning down in size in, in some categories at least. And yeah, it should be a good time. There's a good point mentioned that shouldn't these watches be you know, the, the pilot watch in the IWC line generally is 40 plus millimeters. It's nice to see something in 36 and it's unconventional. And it did spark my thoughts around the whole field of wearing your watches. And sorry about that. Get the mouse out of the way. I'll tell you what, let's get into the chat. I'm sorry about this, everyone. I'm missing you. And there's so many comments. I see Megan saying hi to Mark. Uh, Matt, good to see you here. Al29. Hans, I think I said hi to you already. Uh, Ken, welcome. And and so, so many more of you, goodness gracious me. If I had to scroll up, it would take me half an hour. Um, the lugs, it's a beautiful watch. I mean, not just the photograph. The photograph is perfect. I mean, he nailed it. Everything from the angle of the shot. It's, it's the most amazing thing when you can just take an image. You don't have to adjust the contrast. You don't have to bump anything. You just zoom it in, and it's the cover shot. And uh, what an amazing photograph. The watch is special. Unique to IWC's format, that bracelet that they love so much too. The proportions are just excellent. And this is something that I think many people are ignoring when we talk about wearing watches you love. When I think about the, the scale of a watch, proportions are really are relative. So depending on the size of the watch, if everything is nicely balanced and spaced, whether it's 36 mils, whether it's 42 mils, that's what matters the most at the end of the day. And an example like this, you can see that everything has been very well thought through. If I zoom in even closer, we can have a look at just the detail in the dial. You notice the date window is the same color as the dial, and it's it's sharp. It's uh, Flieger-inspired field watch based on the, uh, I, I would say this is kind of like a Mark 15. Maybe that's the reference that they're going with. I can never, I can never keep up. IWC braces are very good. Yeah, for sure, the originals, those beads of rice braces that they did in the 90s, those they are very hard to come by, and they are some of the best out there, I think. Absolutely beautiful. 
So stunning, stunning watch for the for the beginning. And you have this moral dilemma when you're doing it, running a YouTube page on watches where the interest lies in in the sports models, as we will see in, in a couple of slides. You know, the blues, the bluesy submariners, the explorers, the GMTs. There's some beautiful photographs that we're going to see in a moment. Those were the close contenders to be the cover. But then a shot like this just cannot be ignored. It has to be used. So yeah, Mark, congratulations. This is a Beautiful shot. And everyone else in the chat, I'm so sorry I'm missing you. It's probably going to be a consistent thing. Is that dead wheel black or the same color as the dial? It looks exactly, it looks like a navy blue. Unless, unless this is the AR coating that we're seeing, it looks like a navy blue window. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, just look up the reference. I'll say it again. It's IW324010. Mm -hmm. Great, really great piece. And with a couple of these cases, we have new time viewers who are just picking up their first luxury pieces and they're sharing them with us and it's going to be good. I mean, yeah, can't wait. Uh, missing you again. I see Flieger, the flying watch saying the new reduced uh, blue pilot is is more like that 36. Yeah, that 43 mil, right? Um, there've been some amazing releases. Honestly, I can't wait to talk about some of the, the ones that really caught my attention. Uh, IWC with that 43 mil model, the, the whole Desert Storm, the ceramic case that they did. It's awesome. Okay, let's move on to the next selection. And this also is very fitting with the, the importance of wearing watches you love. Surprisingly, I did a video on two-tone watches a couple of days ago. I'll put that in the corner of the screen if I remember. But this subject is uh, very divisive and I love it. It was actually, I did not expect, sorry about this, I've got a huge amount of text because we're going to have a collection review. As you see, when I put the mouse on the screen, there's a long line. Um, very divisive subject, the area of two-tone and where it sits now and, and where the interest lies in this, this category. And I was surprised at the feedback. You should look at the video just for the comments because it's 50-50, it's I would say. There's some who love it. No, it's like 25, 25, 50. The majority don't like two-tone. They think it dates the watch too much and all of this. But in some rare cases, rare and attractive cases, we could say, uh, this watch especially, the date just deserves two-tone. And this one, What's great about it is it's not the conventional date just arrangement. You would expect to see a Jubilee bracelet. You'd expect to see fluted bezel. You don't expect to see a champagne dial either. So this is from Aiden. It's his first submission and it's his first Rolex. He thought it'd be something he could celebrate and freaking awesome that you could share with us. So it's the reference 126203. And I think he also said in the email that it's a watch that he didn't have to beg and plead for at the authorized dealer. He could just go in, pick it up, no problem. Easy, done and dusted. Don't you miss those days, the good old days? Let's get right into that texture on the dial. Ooh, that's cool. That is really cool. And there's a few other messages in the chat. I saw some tags. I think I said, saw Megan say hi. Yeah, I haven't said hello to. Hi, hi Megan. It's good to have you here. Uh, and Eric saying one, one in 45 hours. Talking about the length of the show, I have no idea how long it's going to be. I've been prattling on for 12 minutes already, and we haven't even started. So speaking of Eric, he... um. He nearly got mauled to death by a swan this week. Discuss. Uh, Jim says, seems like such a long time. Lovely Saturday. Oh, it's a pleasure, Jim. I know it does. I mean, it's been it's been like three, three weeks, I think, since we've done one of these. And I've found that my my interest, my engagement in these definitely increase when I have a break from them. Because these are four-hour shows and they can kick you in the nads. Uh, you do get a bit of a hangover the next day. And the thinking is, you know, take a break get back into it, and the interest is still there when you come back. Let's get this off the screen and get the collection up in a second. Uh, Aiden, love the shot. I think we've got a few more date justs coming along. I want to get rid of all this extra text. So Bidev, you're in the chat, and this came out of nowhere. He sent in his current collection for us to look at, so we can enjoy that in a moment. And he's got a really broad selection of pieces. And there are a few that I immediately am drawn to. There's one especially that I would take in a heartbeat. And I'm sure most of us could probably recognize it on the on the screen. Let's get back into the chat again. I see Turbo T2. The IWC lineup is really strong. Yeah, for sure. 36, 46 pilots plus the Portugueses. Very good quality. You know, now is the time to be looking at other brands. I'm speaking about the watches that we love, the importance of finding them and wearing them. Well, there's there's some great deals out there. Uh, especially the brands that are not being looked at, the pieces that aren't being paid attention to. Hell, even the, even the models that are going, should we say, out of uh, circulation, 
they have been around for a long time and they're slowly disappearing. I reckon you have a look. So let's see what else is going on. As always, I'm missing you all here. Goodness gracious me. This is gonna be a it's gonna be a marathon. Right, let's get in. So there's mention about the Explorer. The one watch that I absolutely adore is this. Hanhart, and I think it's I think it's the 417. That's a reference. Let me just read the description of all notes. Yeah, it is. It's the 417 uh, SE or something. I don't know, special edition. So we've got a Glycine Ammon, we've got a Hanhart, we've got a Monaco, I think it's a Caliber 12. We've got an Explorer 36. This is the solid end links. I'm guessing it's the last run, 114270. We've got a Hamilton Khaki with a date, very nice. Tudor Black Bay 58, Zinn Chronograph. I'm not even going to try and guess that. I'll definitely get the description up in a second. This is a 104, Zinn 104 on bracelet. We've got a... Uh, what's it, a turtle, I just call it a turtle, Damasco Diver, Damasco D something, I can never get that one right, Casio something Diver, and a Wenger Diver, and a, another Casio, <laughs> so I'll get the descriptions up, but of these watches in the selection, if I had to choose three, uh, it's the, the, there's, there's some very good pieces to look at, so what did I get wrong, the Zin 303, so I'm guessing that's one, the one on the far right. Casio F-108WH. Oh, my goodness. Casio Duro Damasco D sub 2. Wow, I was kind of close. And it's the SRP779 for the Seiko. Interesting collection. Very broad. Uh, and you can see that his tastes all over the place, which is nice. It's nice to have variety and variance in that set. Right on. Shaitan says, best retirement watch, Portuguese. <laughs> Uh, we're getting in strong. I've got to get some more coffee in me, I think. should have seen me downing the first coffee before the show. It was like I was going down it through a protein shake. Kid you not, I woke up like half an hour before the show started. And it's a bit weird suddenly thinking, okay, you've got to talk about watches now. Turn your brain on. Um, with Zen, I'm really curious how scratch resistant the Tejimento steel is. Brent, as far as I know, it is exceptional. Uh, I've heard claims that you can quite literally take your keys and just scrape the case as much as you want, but not all of them are tegumented steel, if I'm if I'm right. Um, only a few models within this category, not as far as I know. These these models, I don't know. I don't think the models like the 104 and and those pieces are tegumented fully. But I must say, the one watch that I'm constantly drawn to is the Hanhart, and it's purely down to that history that it has. Uh, the Hanhart influenced so many chronographs it is the reason for <laughs> uh, when you talk about in the modern chronograph the uh the type 20s you talk about the big eyes you talk about all the big names and this is a german name from back in the day during the 1950s and reparation and all that going on in germany uh this watch basically became the standard for all pilot chronographs of that time and there's there's so much to study and learn look up watch is watch history i'm going to put his uh tag hold on is that it yeah i don't know if you can see that in the chat but check out watch history on youtube one of the best channels for the knowledge when it comes to studying up on some very we say eclectic vintage pieces i love it bdev i don't know how we'll be able to crit the collection in this time frame but uh, it's nice to see some variance you know in one space slick black white feathers horns yeah whatever that's about i uh, got my second shot today that's good to know well done um, and arson, and I don't know what else is going on in the chat, but uh, it's uh, a ride, <laughs> ride a white swan. Yeah, Eric, Eric got mauled by a swan. He was obviously going after the wrong wildlife. Okay, so we're going to move on next to a not heard of Hanhart, the Chidge. You have to, it's Hanhart without the E. It's uh, it's H-A-N-H-A-R-T. Amazing history. Steve McQueen wore one. Uh, there have been a couple of collaboration exercises in the past with Revolution Watch, models and, with bronze cases and stuff. There's so much to study. They have influenced the everything. Navigation watches, Navi timers, everything. They've, they were really, really popular. Really important, should I say. Watch history rules, Orange Hand. Yeah, fully agree. Check out his channel. I highly recommend. Okay, let's get into some Rolexes. Why not? Bado, I don't know if he's in the chat, but he sent a lot of them. Like, like lots, but not just that. We've got a nice variety on top of it. But let's uh, get warmed up by looking at some of these pieces. It's pretty good to get the show rolling. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a very Rolex heavy show, but his collection makes up for 
the professionals that we would like to see in a, in a space. And the beauty is that some of these shots are taken in the light. Some of them are taken in darker environments. So we get to see how the light plays on these pieces. Now, question. I don't know the reference of this one. I feel like this is the 1-1 one, one reference. This is not the 1-2 reference. Uh, the case looks pretty squared. So this is the precursor to what we've just seen released. But the two-tone Submariner, again, we're chatting about the whole uh, dilemma around two-tone watches in general and where they sit today. And we think about the Explorer 36 now in two-tone and what are these brands thinking about? And and so it goes. It's, uh, it's an ever-evolving thing. Um, it, it feels... I mean, especially this watch, it it does ride this line of being something that is almost eternal within the Rolex catalog. And you would expect when they brought out the new series of Submariners that they would possibly remove this watch from their catalog. But, you know, since the, the 80s, it's been around and it still is just as timeless. It's pretty incredible how they can have, you know, the very standard Submariners and then have a watch like this that looks the total opposite in comparison, you know? Okay, Glenn Livett going down the hatch. Glenn, Glenn Morangi, sorry. I can't get my whiskey names wrong. All right, love the blue bezel in the sub. It's awesome. And there's another great shot straight after it where we can see it in a bit less of a direct light where it goes a bit flatter. And, I mean, again, it's it's all personal preference. The, the beauty of wearing watches you love. Let's try and address that now. I've been talking for 20 whole minutes. Um yeah, we're in this space now where there's this, especially now on, on the YouTube platform, I would say, there's this huge stigma around what is a good watch and what you should be paying money for and what you should be paying attention to and where the attention should lie and, you know, opinions around watches that you get. And at the end of the day, I mean, if, if you don't enjoy the watch, what's the point of getting it? It's 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 such a divided thing. I've been being a part of a lot of live shows behind the scenes, like um, Watch Talk with the Punters. The Hort Take has just arrived. So so Watch Talk with the Punters on a Sunday. It's awesome. Uh, Hort Take on a Tuesday with JCB. He's just uh, hopped into the chat. And then uh, on Friday, Bobby Legs. Friday at like 2, two in the morning, UK time. And we have, we've been having a lot of these talks around existential crises and how you know public opinion sways our attention with watches and all of that and yeah at the end of the day you you will eventually when it comes to collecting you will eventually find your footing and the watches that you love and enjoy and i think this journey should not be something that really should be dictated to you by the majority you really need to think long and hard about what speaks to you and, and what watches work and in the cases of two-tone i think that's a very uh, useful useful area there Okay, Miss Newell, Miss Newell here. What's going on? Uh, goodness gracious, Shy Town, you got it right. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Mark. So it is a one one six one three six six one three. Don't worry though, we are not we're not uh, stopping here. We've got a few more to have a look at. Let's check out. Okay, let's have a look at the Explorer, <laughs> my my long lost favorite. Isn't it? It's it's crazy. I mean, again, we we're referring back to the same talking points that have been discussed again and again and again, but. I haven't spoken to anyone uh, through a live show since uh, since Watches and Wonders and the discontinuation of this model and have my opinions changed on this watch now that it's gone and the the prices of these things on the secondary market is just ridiculous, man. It's it's hilarious. It is truly hilarious. They're great watches. Can't can't go wrong with them. Absolutely can't. But the the, the demand for for pieces just it's it's entertaining to watch. I would say sitting back and listening to the feedback and everything there. Okay. Um, Matt's saying, I agree. It's a personal journey. Yeah, it is. It is. And here is, here's an example of a watch that I tried my hardest to like, to love. The 36 mil I'm looking forward to experience one day. But this one, after months, I mean, I had it for like seven months or something. No, it wasn't. It was like four or five months at least. And it just didn't gel. There was just something about it that didn't sit. And it's it's the weirdest thing having, you know, preaching how great these watches are and they are superb but then at the end of the day if it doesn't speak to you don't don't wear it unless you, you shouldn't be doing this for clout factor i think at the end of the day that's the uh, summary never let anyone change your mind hans yeah we're getting really deep we're only 20 minutes in how's that how much are these selling for now bs asks i think i've heard they're going for like 11k 11 i think this is us dollars Eleven thousand or something daft uh, it's just that's unbelievable 
I mean, this is this is an Oyster Perpetual with a, a different dial and a, a fancier clasp. That's about it. It's it's crazy. Uh, let's move on to another. And uh, Megan's asking what's on everyone's wrists. That's a good question. I should do that. We should have a separate segment. Um, let's have a look at a Pepsi GMT. This is a beautiful shot taken in the back of the taxi. And we can see this is probably the Gen 1 of the Pepsi GMT, judging by the, the bezel. Okay. So let's see what else is going on in the chat. Sorry, I missed you a second ago. There was a question. There was some good points. I think George asked a question saying, I wonder if a lot of people who have bought Rolex for supposed investments are going to look back in 10 years and wish they had bought something. I mean, that's it, George. We're in this time where, especially on platforms like these, where there's a, a larger community base and people are guiding each other in a certain direction and in a way influencing demand at the same time, which is also pretty fascinating as a, as a case study. But then you think back to just the, the amazing stuff that you can get for, for half the price. Yes, maybe they're not in-house movements. Yes, maybe they don't have the same kind of name attached to them, but they have the aesthetics that could be far better. They have far more character behind them. You know what I mean? Uh, the GMT, as great as it is, it's such an efficient watch for what it is. The colors are superb. I love that history. It's it's very efficient. But then what it lacks, in for, for my taste at least, is it lacks that little bit of character that you could get out of a model like the Explorer, say. You know, compare these two watches together. The Explorer does have that, that little winking, smiling face compared to the, the typical, you know, it's essentially the sub, sub arrangement of how the components are, are aligned there. Love the Mark One Pepsi. Orange Hand says, "Yeah, I mean, on the Jubilee especially. And now, now we're going back into the subject of they've brought out oyster bracelets again for these models, and that's that's a new thing. They've returned to that. What a weird release series, uh, you know? Oh, and um, Pusher, uh, hi, hi, Carl. Good to have you here. Talking about the thirty-six mil. I'm not kidding. Like that's that's probably going to be my my first and maybe my last Rolex. I'm super super stoked to experience one of those." Uh, I think it does fit the bill of what the Explorer should be. I'm a little bit disappointed that it wasn't slightly bigger. 36 is, but it should be good too. I really hope to get some hands-on time with it for sure. Should be good. Um, Got to love it. And and Mark was wearing a 214270. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, going to carry on down. Some more watches. Okay, this is a completely different category, but this was very much driven by... Actually, let's talk about G-Shock for a second. I have, I have been... We all have, actually, I shouldn't just say I, we all have been looking at G-Shock quite differently over the last, how long? Year, year and a half. The interest has just skyrocketed. Models like the Casio Oak, the Cassie Oak, right? They have, they have gone all over the place. And we are so interested in the idea of watches that you can just wear and enjoy. And the beauty is that they are affordable, they're fun, they can be worn everywhere. There's no, there's no need to damage your prettier pieces. And uh, now we move into another category where this is the John Mayer edition that was released in partnership with, with Hodinkee and Casio. And, and they've got like six multiplications of how many people were involved. And there was a nice, quite a touching story around this watch being inspired by his uh, original instruments that he used to play as a kid, I think. If I remember that right. Now we're in this zone where there's... So much demand for G-Shock. I made a joke earlier today with one of our mutual friends of the channel that uh, in, in 2030, we'll be seeing waiting lists for, for G-Shocks. <laughs> They'll be trading over retail. I don't know, man. The, the way these, these things go. Uh, oh, Sam. Welcome, Sam. It's good to have you here. 2254 on. Awesome. Um, I hope we get to hang out again in the next few next few weeks. It's great to have you here. I hope you enjoy the, the discussion and the show. You come for the watches, you stay for the chat. That's how these go. Uh, good thing I caught you, man. It's awesome to have you here. Uh, 36 is perfect. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking forward to, to experiencing it. Uh, Giza's birthday. Yeah, Giza had a birthday this week. And goodness gracious, sorry about missing the chat. Tag me in the chat if you want to get my attention. As always, everyone. Uh, and let's see. G-Shocks are great watches on their own. Yeah, they, they sure are. I agree. This is a very nice color palette. For all the, the mocking that this got, being another limited edition and a collaboration and everything, I think that gray tone, it's awesome. The, the gray Casio, gray Cassie Oak is one that I've been looking at a lot. And it's, it's very interesting how the attention goes in different directions. I don't know if it's social media driven. I don't know if it's just a community-based thing or it's just word getting out a bit more. But it's, uh, 
It's awesome. Frogman models trade way over retail. Yeah, Eric, the Frogmen are very popular, right? And the Mudmen as well. And it's, I think it's also amazing what they offer when you talk about, you know, all the different features, the chronographs, GMTs, uh, altimeters, thermometers, all of it. Okay, let's keep on rolling. Another shot of the Explorer in direct light. And Sam is now in the chat. We can I can address him directly. We were chatting about this. This you know, I borrowed his Explorer for the the review, and he told me without me realizing. You look at this photo and you think that it's a matte dial, but these are actually gloss dials. And what happens is it's to do with like light diffusion of some kind, how it works through the crystal. But this is in fact a gloss dial that looks to the naked eye looks matte unless you're holding it in a very specific direction, which is pretty fascinating. Um, and I think many people are very happy that they own the 39 mil. I didn't mention that a second ago. The 39 mil now has, I think, a greater fan base. Oops, come back, come back. This is awesome. I don't know if this is an Everest strap or it looks like it might be aftermarket. I don't know, but I love the integrated uh, end link there with the rubber. That's yeah, cool. The Explorer you can't go wrong with. I mean, as a, as a fun everyday wearer, it's it's great. Haven't sold it yet. No, Sam, keep it. I think now, if you, as we discussed, the story behind the watch and it being, you know, this this piece that you picked up and one that you're just going to keep wearing, I think you should enjoy it. Uh, fits your wrist perfectly too, man. I mean, how can you not? Watching the wrist now. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's such an interesting watch in the sense of it being just such a easy to grab and go and very egalitarian across the board where no matter where you are, in this this category of watch collecting, the Explorer is just such a good one to have. You know, it's another supplementary piece that adds to the collection, and it's it's rock and roll, as uh, as Al says. Okay, hitting the uh, the coffee, and we've got a few more cool pieces to have a look at. I just love this arrangement on the rubber strap. It's a nice nice placement. James Duffy saying thirty nine mil OP owners felt the same way last year. Yeah, I mean. What a stunning pair of watches those were. The white dial, 39 OP. And it wasn't even white. It had like this creamy, champagne-y color to it. It was awesome. Um, yeah, it's it's great. Okay, we're going to go in a different direction now. He did send in a few more. This is all from the same guy, by the way. Bado, thank you so much for sending these to us. First Omega in space. Uh, this is you know, my probably my favorite Speedmaster. Maybe I'm a bit biased. But uh, all, all the little quirks, the, the straight lugs, the alpha hands, the uh, the way the, the only downside is that the hands are polished and reflective in, in some lights. But it just captures the original Speedmaster. You know, you have the applied logo there. And I don't think we have, we don't have any modern. We've got the whole series of Snoopy Speedmasters to go through in a second and a 321, but we don't have the modern 3861 uh, caliber that's just come out on the show, I don't think, if I remember right. Uh, but it's awesome. And yeah, I don't know what's going on in the chat. I'm going to have to just try and skim read as as I go. Uh, and you may find yourself living in a shotgun shack. Is that a lyric, Eric? I hope that swan was, was nice to you. Okay, so we move from the Speedmaster that we know and love. Oh, the Blue Snoopy. We're going to have a look at that in a sec. Don't worry. It's It should be... It's actually coming up in a moment. How's that? We've got some really under the under the name lined up with B, alphabetical. We've got some good stuff. Okay, then we've got a Hublot Classic Fusion. I don't know the age of this watch, but I think he was just trying this on out in the open. Some of these shots that we're going to see now are tried on in the boutique, which is good fun. I don't know the age of this. I'm, I have this feeling that it's a watch from like the early 2000s and not anything very recent, but maybe I'm completely wrong. Hublot and their models, they go all over the place. Uh, talking about uh, football scores or something, Eric, I don't know, 3-3. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Uh, sad that a lot of the rugby has stopped, though. I've been enjoying that. And I'm in reviews. Welcome. Good to have you here, Herman. Loved the talk on uh, on the Bobby Legs show. It's good fun. I really enjoy just collaborating in the chat for a change. It feels so weird having to sit down and say, right, time to present, you know? Okay. Uh, Father Artifact, good to have you here. He said, regardless of the model, the Speedmaster is quite beautiful. Yeah, sure is. It sure is. I mean, it's when we talk about industrial design and build for purpose and application, it is just a classic, timeless. Okay, now this was cool. This watch is probably one of the most divisive, and that is the uh, the Hulk, the now discontinued Hulk Submariner. 
and we can see how it plays in different lights. I'm actually interested. Let's have a bit of a, a feud debate going on in the in the chat. Why, if you comment, why if you like this or n if you don't. I'm very interested in the feedback and the balance of uh, yeses and nos. It's a strange one. I love the emerald dial with the green bezel. The, be the beautiful thing is in a second, we're actually going to have a look at this in off light. And you notice how different it is when it's not in direct light. This is such an appealing arrangement, you know? When it's in direct light, it's a little bit too much. Oh my goodness, lots of no's. Whoa, wow. It's almost like a unanimous no. <laughs> that is insane, people. That is insane. Okay, well, there we go. I mean... That is nuts. I don't think I've ever seen such a, a one-sided, <laughs> not my jam, Kermit's nicer. I mean, that's crazy. I think we're going to have a look at a Kermit later on in the aluminium format or aluminum to my American brothers. That's crazy. Okay, I've never seen that, that you know, one-sidedness divide. I do like it in the off-lighting, though. That's a cool arrangement. The one thing that really bugs me, though, is that bezel. The bezel looks way too bright for what it is. This was one of the first modern Submariners I ever handled years back. You know, when they had them in the shop windows, you could just go and try them on. <laughs> Those are the days, you know. Uh, I prefer my Alpinist. Talk about green. And, and the idea of green watches, that was lots of uh, memes and jokes going around on social this past week that industry is now just shoving green watches down our throats. <laughs> and you see it everywhere. I mean, all the new releases from, you know, brands just, it's just nuts. I think JLC and IWC, and I can't even name all of them. There were lots, though. It was like the majority of colors chosen. Yeah, so uh, say insane, correction, Dan. <laughs> uh, BDEV says, last night Bobby Legg's show got a little out of hand, but it was fun. Turned into edgy Canadian night, and all of that went over my head, BDEV, because as you know, as most probably know, I'm from South Africa. It's a little bit... A little bit uh, out of out of touch with the rest of the world so i wasn't getting the canadian jokes very much but uh i do know neil young is from canada and he's a he's pretty cool i learned a lot of his stuff uh bezel is just too much like a Crayola crown flat color i mean turbo the thing is another thing to point out is that these are one of the first colored bezels that they ever put on these watches in ceramic if i remember right and you know the, the process of of getting the color right i would feel to be a bit easier than what they they seem to word it as apparently the process is like 15 stages. It's not that complicated to do what they do, but you know, uh, to each their own. This watch has been discontinued. The bezels still remain though. Um, most green watches don't look like toys though, Megan says. And it is down to the color, I think. The, the whole, when, when it's a darker shade, when it's olive drab, when it's emerald, then it really moves it into a different category altogether. You know, we can talk about it for days, but there's some more cool stuff coming up. Let's have a look at the Odysseus. Why not? This is tested at the boutique. And later on, we will see the Odysseus on a rubber strap, which is also pretty cool. So we can enjoy what this watch looks like sans bracelet. But this watch has started growing on us, I think, over time. The weed just. Yeah, that was good. Thanks. Thanks, Megan. That was a... Uh, thing I put up on Instagram. Got some very angry comments on that that post I did, by the way. Um, I basically took the new Datejust with the palm fronds and put it on a on a cannabis background. And it was, uh, yeah, a bit divisive to say the least. Speaking of Canada, are there any Canadian watch companies? I'm sure there are, but I can't think of it. Marathon. No? Is Marathon a Canadian company? There's There should be lots, though. Many of you in the chat, I'm sure, will know your stuff around this. So the Odysseus, this watch has started growing on us, I think. The um, the elements that are very dividing, the whole bracelet integration looks a little bit rushed, you know? And the, the talking point that I like is that many are saying it feels as if the watch, the face was designed by someone and then the bracelet was designed by someone else. It wasn't a, um, a, a unanimous agreement in all areas. But the beauty about this being the sports watch that Lunga wanted to go with is that it does still look like a Lunga. And that's... That's the cool part. It's nice when a brand doesn't uh, go against its identity for the sake of appealing to a mass audience. You know, they do the typical 70s arrangement that we've seen time and time again. Even if their watches never originated in the 70s, they want to just be sure that they're on that same hype train. This is an example of a watch that does still sit in its own little category. 
Surprising that I haven't seen this watch, the, the white gold version worn by a lot of people, because that is just a cut above, in my opinion. The the Canadian, the Canadian, I can't read the chat while talking, Raymond. Canadian watches, a eh, sorry, yeah, I got it. Um, the white the white gold version, it has like a fluted dial inside, and it's it's on a leather strap. It's a lot more elegant. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a goodie. Nice looking piece. Not done yet, though. We have, and we're going to see this on an orange rubber strap later on, which should be fun. Uh, we've got a Vacheron Constantin Patrimony. I think it's th under the traditional line, I think. I've actually recorded a video about the um, the VC, uh, what's it, the Historique American 1921. I just find that watch absolutely fascinating. I can't wait. I'm going to get that edited over the next two weeks. I've got a big video coming out next week with uh, partnership with Chrono24. Daniel, thank you so much. Canadian dollars. We do have a few Canadians watching Marathon in Canada. So I guess that right. Thank you, Daniel, for the super chat. So yeah, Marathon is one, and they make exceptional watches. I'm pretty sure they, they're one of the only that still use tritium tubes. And you know, you got to have tritium loom on some pieces. This patrimony is beautiful. As some might mention in the chat, this watch is very... Uh, What's the word? Vatican. It's too Vatican for some people out there. I'm sure Megan would agree. Uh, but it is clean, simple. I do love the balance. And I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the show that when we're talking about watches that we love and size and scale and proportion, that's one of the things that really uh, pushes me into the area when I'm interested in a watch. And whether it's 40 mils or 36, if it looks like there's been a lot of care put into <clears throat> just how everything is arranged on a dial, this to me feels like a watch that has been spaced appropriately. You know what I mean? Balance, the bezel is nicely sized. It matches, the width of the bezel almost matches the width of the lugs, which is cool. It's also not in your face and uh, yeah, it's a gem. But the stud is joining us. You won't believe it, but he is coming up in a moment actually. We've got about, how many? Maybe 10 submissions and we're going to have a look at your set of pieces and that should be great. Bud, good having you here. Um, and if you do need to leave the show, as you do on occasion, as we've uh, learned over time, you can go to church, you can have a three-course meal, probably finish your doctorate and still be able to catch a bit of the show going on. So uh, it should be good. Like uh, this guy tends to talk a lot. The coffee, once you hit the 20 minute mark, the coffee hits the brain. So this is, uh, we're in, we're on fire. Uh, Pre-Vatican, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's good. So next up we have a root beer. I love this shot. Gotta love a classic root beer. This watch appeals to many, and you can see you can see why. It also doesn't appeal to many <laughs> for the same reason. It's it's one of the most divisive and polarizing GMTs that I think they've ever made. Uh, okay, let's see what else is going on. Sorry about this chat that I missed. Demetrius is joining us. Awesome. Look forward to sharing your Panerai in a moment. Um, Turbo is saying such a classy design. It is. It's a classic. Classic. Uh, Michael says, give me sword hands or give me death. <laughs> Talking about Vatican, I guess, again there. Uh, yeah, it's it's cool. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Can you say nipple on YouTube to pigs in blankets? I think you can. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, nipple dial, as as mentioned. The, there's there's a few uh, variants of this, and my my absolute favorite would be the tiger's eye with the more standard-looking dial. The, the nipple arrangement and the matte finish does age this piece a lot, and I just find it so, like, cool and comical how they divided up the the caramel and the custard arrangement on the it's, it's so funky it's also two-tone which is another very divisive subject that we love Chaz from the berg watching on the road i did see your comment earlier um have a safe trip we're going to be jumping to your grand seiko in a second and it's a stunning watch i've not it is and it's a prospects i've never seen one before it's a prospects gmt or something Chaz, thank you really have a have a great great drive i hope it's not too long of a journey uh, we do have a few more. This is from the same guy. Hey, we've still not done. Bado sends in a vintage date just. Getting a bit more down to earth with a with a classic. Engine turned bezel. You don't see that very much today. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a dream. Hitting the, uh, the Glen Morangie again. Great having you here, Tim. We have a lot, a lot on display. I don't know how long this, it's 43 minutes and, oh, Okay, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to space out some of these, or I don't know. This might end up being the longest marathon of all time. <laughs> what does that mean? Four and a half hours. 
sorry, back to 36 again. We will see this as an ongoing theme as the show continues. The 36s are coming out of the, the cupboards, you know. They're, people are people are finding them in their drawers and bringing them out again. They are a revival. Uh, what year, Samurai? I do not know. I would imagine it's probably early 90s, maybe late 80s. Someone help me out. I feel like this could be an early 90s piece. It's Does it fall under that? What is the reference? I can't think of references off the top of my head. I'm not I'm not in the mode. Um, Nefarion, you're never late. Time is relative. Einstein said it himself. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. You're not late at all. Been chatting for, what, 40 minutes? And we've probably got another three hours to go. Uh, awesome looking piece, though. 36 mil is the new 44, Sam Ray says. <laughs> uh, and welcome, Jilly Badger. Um, and James Duffy says, the date just looks best in traditional 36. It is... Just, I mean, it's it's the typical format. I think the way this is arranged too, with the, the bezel, semi fluting, engine turning, jubilee bracelet, it's it's a stuff of legends. Oh, and thank you, Raymond. It's the one six. I was going to say one six zero one, but the three is the add-on, so it's a five digit one six zero one three. Thank you for that, Raymond. Okay, going to hop to the next piece, the Yacht Master. This one I've had some quite extended hands-on time with, and many do feel that this watch is one of the most underrated in the catalog. I have to agree. It does ride this line of dressiness quite well. And uh, yeah, I had a good time. I had I had my Seamaster on that day and I got to see this watch and get some good hands on time with it. It's I must say it's very shiny. That's one thing that stood out to me a lot. The, the polished lugs and the polished center links do make it a different animal to what you would expect. You see this arrangement and you think Submariner, you think GMT, but then when you get it in the metal, you notice just how reflective everything is. Plus, the dial glows, uh, or should I say, shines in the light. And uh, the white gold insert is just awesome. I think this this really is something that they need to continue. Um, and there's a few micro brands we're actually going to see later with the same arrangement of, uh, what do you what would you call it? Not embossed. You no, know, you say embossed. An embossed bezel like this arrangement. So this is in direct light, and I think this is in off light. This is in more of a natural setting that you'd expect to see it. But I think what they nailed here especially is the uh, the graphite and the baby blue. It's very interesting. It's something that you would expect from a Tudor, not a Rolex anymore. You know what I mean? So a uh, good, good-looking piece. And Megan says, love microbrands. I think the one we're going to have a look at comes from Raymond. And it's a Formex Reef, I think is the reference. And it's pretty much based on this kind of aesthetic. But there's some very nice features. It comes with micro adjustments on the bracelets, easy easy to attach uh, straps and everything there. So we will definitely, there are a few micro brands that we will be featuring, I'm pretty sure. Um, so Bado has sent in a lot of these pieces, a lot. But we've had a good time just browsing through a, a broad selection of Rolex pieces, getting the releases off our chest. And now we can get into another zone. Let's jump to Bart next. Bado, thanks again for all of these. So we're going to Longines. And there was talk a second ago, a bit earlier on, about getting into watches now where the attention is not necessarily on them. This is a good example of one, I believe. Um, this is the Sector Dial. I think it's in 39, 39 mils, 38, 39 mils. Longines has one of the best historic back catalogs out there. You just have to raid their museum and you could find so many just, just amazing stuff in their catalogs. Um, this was an aviator's watch, I'm pretty sure, made for made for pilots. Yeah, sector dial is a beauty. Very seldom that we see sector dials on watches. There, there are a few micro brands that are toying with it, like Baltic, I think. But then between this and the Baltic, we have to go all the way up to watches like JLC and Patek to get sector dials. So this, for like what, a grand and a half, two grand? It's a very nice proposal. And then you've got blued hands and all of those factors too. Love it. Longines just just does great stuff. I think it's yeah, you're right. Thank you, Raymond. Thirty eight. Um, are we still on Foxy Lady? Justin says. Hmm. Gotta love some Hendrix. Uh, Omega Seamasters looks so good with that Yacht Master bezel too. Yeah, Sam Ray. What was that model that they did? It was like an America's Cup model, or it was a, a Beijing Olympics. I, I remember it though from a while back. Hitting the coffee again. I'm pretty sure these watches range about two thousand dollars you can get superb discounts and they're great second hand to have a look Longines is very underrated uh the church mentions they are they are as you'll probably see um in a few weeks time i'll keep it at that but the cool thing about this is he took shots with his 
cello. I believe it's a cello. And it's always good to see some context shots in the, uh, in the arrangement. It's a stunning little machine. I mean, when you think of just character traits, this is definitely one that is a character in this line. Um, oh, Megan, don't worry. I've, I might have saved a Longines that you shared uh, that's going to be featured in a couple of slides very soon. Yeah, it is class. I agree, Eric. Um, has a Longines on the way. Uh, Neferion, no, no. I've had it for about three weeks, but that's another story. We'll get to that in about two weeks' time. I need to do a proper review of it and... You know, try as I might, I've been trying my best to fault the watch, but I, I've struggled, really struggled. So it's going to be it's going to be a good talk, got to say. Now is the time to be looking at watches like these, that's all. I think it's especially watches that aren't getting the attention. You can get such good price gouges, uh, brand new, secondhand. They're all out there. Have a good look. Mohammed, welcome from Bahrain. That is awesome. It was been some amazing. Like we saw, I saw someone from the Netherlands joining in. We've got lots of Canadians and Americans and Australians, and it's, it's such great fun. Anyway, awesome piece. Uh, love it. We are going to jump to a broad range of Omega Speedmasters. Now, it's one thing saying that you have a Snoopy Speedmaster, but it's another thing to say that you have the set of Snoopy Speedmasters, which is pretty cool. Uh, this comes in from Bobby K. I don't know if he's in the chat with us, but uh, I really like this. I did a video all about the Snoopy Speedmaster and went through the, the stages of how the watch began and where it is now in the current current arrangement. I'm trying to remember this this new one. We're actually going to have a look at the new one. now. When we get it on the screen, we'll have a look. But the first gen was very basic. All it had was the little patch on the, on the sub-dial and a a logo on the case back. There, these ones are faked, as far as I know. These ones are faked a lot, and it's difficult to find original Gen 1 Snoopies that are the, the real deal, because you can find aftermarket case backs and stuff that can really, I mean, imagine spending like 10 grand on a watch and realizing it's it's not original. Uh, and then, of course, the second Gen is the one that everyone loves talking about, and then we have the new Sterling Silver. Sterling Silver is getting popular. So let's get to Snoopy 1, I've called it. And here it is. That's the original. I mean, it, I think it just used the, the base 1861 caliber. Nothing, nothing special. And the, the only thing they changed was putting that little little badge on the side. And on the case back, you have the same. I think it's also like a, an engraving that was used on the pins back in the day. Um, yeah, Duranfix says, I don't think I've ever seen anyone with a full set of Snoopies. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I was really surprised. This, what's this thing? I mean, you just out of the blue get these kinds of emails. And uh, it's it's so cool. It's it's always a surprise for me, especially. Uh, a lot of the time, you just get these these submissions from guys who have never submitted watches before, and it's it's just a trio of greatness. So it's good fun. Going to have a look. So this is the Gen One. It's it's very basic, but it's also the most the most subtle. Uh, yeah, and Matt, I think Matt loves these three stripe everything. My next dog will be called Snoopy. Yeah. I mean, isn't it funny that this is actually a beagle? I never, I never associated Snoopy with a beagle when I was younger back in the day. Okay, so we're jumping to the Snoopy two, and this one is oh, what the demand for this watch is just out of out of control. I think I do agree that it is. I think in the video discussion that I had about this watch, the, the, the arrangement of them all is that this one holds up to the Snoopy name the best. I mean, the monotone colors are very true. It's very comic-like. The frames of the comic around the, the what can you do in 14 seconds is really charming. Come on, Magic Mouse. Magic Mouse is not working with me. But anyway, you get the gist. I'm trying to get it big. There we go. Uh, failure is not an option. I mean, it's really... I mean, the whole point of these watches is that they are supposed to be fun. I think people take... <laughs> Orange Hand says the weed just is the Snoop Dogg. <laughs> um, the whole the whole thing about this that I think people are going through at the moment with watch collecting is they're turning it into a very serious thing in many areas, especially when you're paying big money for pieces. But the Snoopies have never been; they should never have been considered serious watches in the first place. Uh, I mean, you've got you've got a, a cartoon dog on your watch. It's like it's like anything with you know stylizing like that there. Uh, the Scooby Doo, <laughs> yeah, it's good. And uh, I saw mention about Heartbreaker by by Led Zeppelin. I don't know what's going on in the chat, but it's it's all good. We're having a yeah, Justin. It's it's cool. We're talking about the selection of pieces for sure. <clears throat> and the voices on the brink. 
So I'm going to probably have to hit the fisherman's friends. Oh, my goodness. See what happens. It just suddenly rolls out. Maybe coffee will help. <clears throat> so the Snoopy 2 is a gem. Nope. Voice is gone. Fisherman's friends, come to my rescue. Fingers crossed. Every single time. Unofficial sponsor. <clears throat> Monochrome colors. Uh, the beauty is when you see this watch glow in the dark. It is it's awesome. And, I mean, when we look at the array of limited edition Speedmasters out there today, this one stands on its own two feet. And that's why I think it's the most impactful that they've ever made in this category, I believe. Um, it's a watch that, even if it wasn't assigned to Snoopy as a character, it still is one that just uh, it lasts by itself. And then we jump to Snoopy, Snoopy 3, which I'm pretty sure this was Sterling Silver. That was the idea. The dial is Sterling Silver. So 925 is the is the latest jam. Speaking of which, we're going to have a look at one in a moment, uh, the new Black Bay in Sterling. That's also going to be featured. Uh, yeah, so of, of course, the beauty of this watch is the case back and seeing um, seeing how the, the, the Snoopy little shuttle, the Apollo shuttle revolves around the dial. That's very charming. And it's, it's a nice use of the new coaxial movement. I think this was the, one of the first 3861s that they... They introduced with this piece and i think it's a ceramic bezel don't quote me great colors maybe it's a bit cliche having the navy and the white but then it does have this panda aesthetic i do like how they've done like a, a reverse negative for the 50th anniversary on here it's it's pretty subtle for what it is um yeah talking about 925s now 925s and I have said hi to you, Thomas, in the chat. Sorry if I've missed you. Uh, Eric saying failure is not an option, has never been. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's quite a daft thing to say, right? How can you, I mean, it's, what's the, what would you say? It's almost a null sentence saying failure is not an option. I mean, obviously, how can, how can you want to fail? How can that be an option ever? <laughs> uh, Sam Ray saying, then Omega will do a Martin, a Martian edition going to Mars. Yeah, apparently there's already a contract uh, fulfilled for the Mars uh, launch. But we were chatting about it on a live show once. Uh, Moser had this new release of Tiger's Eye dials on their, their Endeavors. I think it's an Endeavor concept to be on. And the, the, the idea of a Tiger's Eye dial to match the color of Mars would be amazing on a piece like this. That's just my, my two cents. But then we also have one of the watches that have really skyrocketed skyrocketed in, in, in interest with interest the three two one the ed white and uh yeah it's this is a very it's I, I look at this watch and i think to myself um my preference lies with the first omega in space i think it has a bit more character to it this one this is almost the transitional which is also pretty nice the transitional reference you know i have the professional hands but you still have the the, the earlier CK straight lugs, which is cool. Um, Luke, absolute pleasure. Luke Venters, it sounds like you're from um, from South Africa or from the Netherlands. Uh, loved my show for a long time, L. Been doing this for, I think Wrist Shot Week's been around for like over a year, a year and a half. I can't believe it. But it's still a lot of fun. It's still a joy doing these things. And thank you for joining us, really. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. These presentations are always a good time. Running a nail through your hand is not an option. CW, I mean, you know, what? Uh, chatting about two, uh, 925 silver, sterling silver. That's it. And Junior Johnson's just joined us, I think. And Flippin' Zippo, I haven't said hi to you. Welcome. Yeah, so this shot is a little bit out of focus, but you get the idea. It's It's got the, it's got the professional dial. A few little quirks like uh, the applied logo, which is very 50s. I think I mentioned before that the history of Omega is that <laughs> everything was built out of parts bins back in the day. So nothing was consistent. And their logos, especially, they have like, uh, on some of these models, I think this one too, probably has about five different logos because everything was out of a different factory. So the, the crown guard, the uh, the crystal would have a different logo, the dial, case back, bracelet, you know what I mean? And you can't talk about the 321 without featuring the 321. So... We've got a nice little column wheel to enjoy. It is a column. Yes, it is a column wheel. Got to get my movement history back. Bud the stud is up next, and we're going to see quite quite a pair of watches. Look at that movement. Why can't more brands share case backs? Share open sapphire case backs. You know, I think of all the things that Omega did with their new um, professional lines with the, the three eight six ones. I wish an open case back was standard. 
or something that you could opt to have on the watch when you bought it. Wouldn't that be cool? You just say, you know, before you get the watch out, the, the technician asks, do you, uh, do you want the case back open or closed? I'm pretty sure 85% would want it open because how can you not appreciate the coolness of a movement there? <laughs> Excellent parts bin, yeah, parts bin specials. I mean, that's the thing. The, even these models, they weren't made in-house. They were very much assembled from bits and pieces. Um, can't wait to get the, the oh, Father Artifact. You're on the list, right? And there's lots. I mean, that's the thing. Now we're going to the zone where, where Omega is now very much a brand where there's enough interest that they're having waiting lists. And these these watches are taking their time being produced. It does this this watch does make sense though. I mean, they're putting a lot more effort into the process when producing these uh, these new movements. Still, it's a charmer. We've had a good chat around Speedmasters though. We're going to hop next to a Royal Oak chronograph and a Daytona in one shot. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, guys, are still checking out. The movement is awesome. Let me try and get a bit closer for us to have a look. Yeah, it's it's stunning. And I've been learning a lot about chronograph movements. As far as I know, this is a lateral clutch. Uh, and you can tell by this arrangement normally, lateral clutch gears instead of vertical clutch. Vertical clutches are a bit more efficient. Lateral clutches, the one downside is that the teeth can skip when you engage the chronograph movement. But the beauty is that they are a lot more visually appealing. So on a case back, they're much nicer to look at. There's something. There's a bit of history about lateral and vertical clutches for you. If you're still awake, welcome. Good to have you here still. Jumping to Bud the Stud next. Uh, <laughs> Jim said, uh, this guy's voice is so soothing. Jim, I can't, I can't believe you said that. Thank you. That's very flattering. But uh, honestly, I don't like the sound of my voice. Isn't that the case with most of us that we can't, we, don't, we never appreciate? It's so awkward actually doing voiceovers, recording for videos and having to listen to yourself over and over again uh i still struggle with listening to myself speak even after doing this for however many years it's the weirdest thing but you know uh jumping to bud the stud next we are gonna have <laughs> the dulcet tones exactly justin thank you uh bud the stud let's have a look now this guy likes his heavy hitters i don't know if he's still in the chat with us but i i find this especially the the, the daytona the green dial and the yellow gold is nuts what a cool pairing Hey? I mean, when do you get to see this in, in one photograph? I love it. It's just, they're so different. So, so different. It's actually, when you talk about it, a solid gold pair, it's really something to take in when you look at how the metal has been finished differently, how the cases are so different. This is a very good case study, actually. Talking about case studies, how's that? Polishing, brushing, uh, the grain, just how the sub dials have been arranged differently on each dial, uh, the texture of the dials, how the light works on them. This is cool. Really like it. Uh, I keep my bank on my wrist, Justin says. I mean, that's it. That's it. Uh, or you can always, I mean, add a few more links and strap it to your ankle and hide it underneath your jeans. That's one way to go. Uh, nice pairing. And I remember we featured, Bud actually picked two of these Daytonas up. Same color, same, same arrangement, both solid yellow gold, both green. And uh, he's one is basically a safe queen, and the other he's going to be wearing. Okay, hitting the coffee, and Mason's giving me some some schooling on Lemania's. Oh, sorry, you might have made a, a typo there. Hitting the coffee again. Talking about Lemania calibers, I I am so not versed when it comes to chronograph movements as it is. I'm learning the, the very basics about vertical clutches, lateral. Um, it's awesome. Really is awesome. Uh, if you have to go gold and green, yeah, green's a great color. I fully agree. Uh, this one is, is the most interesting of the solid gold Daytonas I've seen, I think. It's amazing how well it works uh, when you think. So here's the question. Here's the comment about Lemania. Lemania 2310 based movements use lateral clutches. Uh, even most of those that have been developed over several generations. Isn't that cool? It's amazing how one caliber can can be everlasting in a sense, you know, modified, but still that that base plate, the chassis is still there. So here we have two automatic, they're both vertical clutches. No, oh, no, yes, they are. Huh? I don't know. I think they're both vertical clutch. Uh, this has a, I'm pretty sure these chronos have an open case back. Maybe I'm wrong. That was a certain generation of AP chronos. Uh, yeah, nice looking pairing. Again, I think uh, Bud really hit it out the park with these two. I just like seeing the, the differences between colors and materials in the shot. You can see how the light plays on the different surfaces. And uh, 
I think the one downside with these more modern Royal Oaks is that these do not screw down anymore. I did like the fact that the originals had screw down pushes because it just makes more sense. I mean, it's in the shape of a of a nut that you would have, you know, for a for a tool to use. So it's it's nice to think that, like the crown, it screws down in a similar way. But these are just here for, for show to protect the the pusher. Uh, of course, the downside is that you can't use a chronograph very quickly when you have to unscrew it, and that kind of ruins the point of it. So you know, uh, yeah, chatting about Daytona is enough. Every watch company is trying to tell us how cool green is. Yeah, for sure. Turbo, they were shoved down our throats. I mentioned that earlier. It's uh, it's crazy. You screw down pushes with a spanner. That'd be good. That'd be good. And I see great, great Titan 79. Good to have you here. Welcome. Sit back, relax. Listen to me put you to sleep. Right, moving on. This is to Chaz. What am I drinking? ETS asks. Uh, Glenn Morangi original. Just the standard original bottle. Uh, gonna hit... Chaz next. Now, this was cool. Chaz is on the road today, and he just picked this up yesterday, I believe, and I have never seen this watch before. It's, it's a, I called it Grand Seiko, but it's not. It's a Seiko LX, so it's a Prospects LX, but it's a GMT, and the reference is SNR049, in quotation, Skyline, Spring Drive GMT, full titanium. What a cool looking watch, and you can see the color inspiration. I, I think it works so well. Um, as we know, the blue and the blue and the black matches the day and night sky. It's a very nice uh, arrangement there. It's it's very it makes sense from a from a visual perspective when we talk about how the GMT works being a day and night indicator. It's it's a good arrangement. Got a power reserve on the left hand side here. Spring drive, ten bar. That's that's a hundred meters water resistance. Pretty sure it's a sapphire capped bezel. And he sends in a few shots so we can enjoy it. Is this the first Seiko that we're featuring? I think it might be. Pretty, pretty awesome. It is a sapphire. I think it is. Oh, I think it is a sapphire cap. And mentioning nice cuff. Looks cool, right? Really cool. This is like very Hen Hendrixian, you know? Love it. Uh, Jack Daniels downed in ice cold Diet Coke. Goodness gracious. You guys are going nuts today. Should do some, um, some Jaeger shots or something later on too. Why not? Uh, talking about thickness. Yeah, that's it, eh? Thickness of Seiko. I mean, most watches today. I've been hell that those new Breitlings. I don't know if you saw the new Breitling premieres that were launched, but what was the thickness of that split time that they did? It was like fifteen mils. You think how how can you make such thick watches for such basic applications? You know. Anyway, let's have a look at some more arrangements. We get some ooh some good macro shots to appreciate here. What a cool pickup though. I mean, you have the typical. Seiko traits. The nice thing about prospects, especially when you start getting into these categories, not a bad looking Seiko, Megan says, even Megan agrees. I mean, that's, that says something, ladies and gentlemen. Um, when you get into this category of, of grand, not grand Seiko, prospects, you're getting, you're teetering right on the edge of grand Seiko. So you start seeing the, the right kind of finishing that you would expect. This being a full titanium case is another thing. I'm pretty sure it shares the same movements that we would be seeing with grand Seiko. So in many ways, you're getting a Grand Seiko for the price of a Prospex, if that makes any sense. Got some thickness. Yeah, sure does. And we've got some more shots to look at. I think there are many redeeming features around this watch. The, the integrated crown guard around the case there, how the crown is offset is nice. The date window is framed, but also matches the color of the, of the dial. Uh, I've just noticed that you can actually use this to time three time zones. No? You've got your hour and minutes. You've got your. You actually got a separate time zone GMT indicator inside the dial. So before you even use the bezel, you can actually use it. So that's two. And then number three, when you want to uh, use the outside bezel too, that's very nice. Very very nice. It's impressive. Also cool. Whenever you see a spring drive, it's nice to have a power reserve. Some might say it does break up the dial. And then you have the James Cameron vibes when you look at how the the black descends to blue. It's kind of the opposite way of how you would normally see it. Yeah, I mean, they did a good job with this. The reference, for anyone interested, again, is the SNR049. Getting back into the chat for all of you here. I uh, hope you're doing good. Seiko needs to be on the list with girth dimensions. <laughs> uh, Grand Seiko are going to become all GMTs as, the, <clears throat> as their signature, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, making just a good point. They are... Uh, they seem to love GMTs in the category. I mean, I think they just launched a new range as well, right? Uh, Norcar, Nor welcome. 400 pieces. Okay, so these are limited editions. 
goodness gracious. I mean, I'm I'm so behind. First hour down. You're kidding me, right? Ten, oh, gee, 69 minutes. That is nuts. I don't know. Yeah. When I, when I start talking, it's like full on diarrhea. Uh, notice how the bezel has in this light, it looks like it's gone almost gray. Yeah, it's it's pretty charming. Got to say, it's it's a very functional focused model. This is where we start questioning. I mean, when I think Grand Seiko, I think more along the elegance line. I think of like the Birch, the Birch model, the Birch ply, I think it's called. We're actually going to have a look at one just now, the Birch dial, the latest uh, snowflake replacement, you know. This is when you start getting into that. I thought this is not Grand Seiko, but you get into that more professional area. That's where they seem to be sitting, where they, they're struggling with their identity around how do we market this as a professional watch in the Seiko camp, but then how do we do the same in the Grand Seiko camp? And uh, yeah, they've got lots of product in their line, we could say. Uh, Sam Ray mentioning that power reserve is approximately 72 hours, accuracy plus one per day, plus 15 seconds per month, 30 joule. That is cool. So yeah, Sam Ray, we're going to have a look at a birch dial later on. Actually, it, it should be coming up pretty soon. There's some awesome pieces and some great, yeah, it just trust me, we're going to be going through quite, quite a variety. Chaz, awesome piece. I think this is one of the only Seiko. No, we do have a few prospects later on. Uh, but next up, we're going to have a look at a micro brand. And it's a really nice micro brand. Talking about field watches and those, uh, you're going to see something that is pretty special. I think made in partnership with Matt Haranik. We're going to have a look in a moment. Um, so listening to podcasts, I noticed continental Europeans pronounce it psycho. Really? Really? Yeah, well, um, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I try my best to get the pronunciations. Again, I'm, I'm out of Africa, so I, I do... You know, I learned I learned a bit of Dutch and pretty good with second languages sometimes, but you know, uh, pronunciations you can always learn a little bit there. Mason saying my navy time is 15 millimeters thick, but it's well designed, so it sits low on the wrist. Yeah, and that's a very good point. And that's a subject that I'll be talking about with the new watch that that I picked up. And Megan mentioning, how did you know that, Megan? Did you did you see the the next watch in line? Mataranic, yeah. So I mentioned Mataranic. Okay, let's get a shot of what's the best shot to look. Okay, so this is from Daniel. Daniel, he lives on the Swiss Alps, basically. So he is out skiing like virtually twice a day, <laughs> and he's sent some amazing stuff in the past. I think we've had Explorer twos from him. We've had one six five dot zero two five. No, one six six dot zero two four, which is the uh, the date. MOD Seamaster, just an absolute gem of a watch. And here we have a micro brand field watch falling under the name Serica. They've got a range of three pieces, and this one I will never get right. I've got, one's a commando, one's a navigation. This falls under the the more what we would say it's it's so what they do, which, which I find fascinating, is they they blend all the different parts that you like out of pieces here. We have Broad arrow hand, which is something that we would see from a 50s watch. We have very Hamilton in the way that the dial is arranged with 24-hour time. And then the quarters, we see that something that's more akin to a Mark 10, Mark 11 IWC. I like it. Very nice. And then we've got some contextual shots, you know, skis and everything there. But of course, let's enjoy the angle. They've done some good, really good job here. I must say the size is well spaced. Very interesting models. Yeah. Does that look like an explorer? But just uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say so. Russell has just joined us. Uh, you wouldn't believe, Russell, uh, we featured your video of the um, of the Phantom at the beginning of the show. I'll be featuring it again for everyone to enjoy, but that was awesome. We can definitely do more of those in the future. Uh, so Megan's mentioning, she knows these watches well. Killer bracelets. They just brought out a new range of bracelets, of course. Um, where's another good shot? We had Mountain. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the next shot that we're going to enjoy is going to be great. We'll see that in a sec. But uh, so I mentioned, Megan mentions that uh, different dials. Three, they, had, they brought out a series of Bond clip bracelets, if I remember right. Sold out of Paris. Uh, top three field watches on the market. Yep, private equity. And they use ETA-based movements or equivalent Salitas. I don't know. I think it is a Salita-based, if, if I remember right. Don't quote me. Really nice color pairing. And of course, what Daniel loves to do is bait us with the most amazing, amazing sceneries. Let's get the watch out the way. I mean, it's, oh my God, it's postcard stuff, always. How is that? I must admit, 
I'm enjoying the fact that, oh, by the way, this is called the Serica Commando. I just realized that's the that's the designation. I must admit, I'm enjoying the fact that the Northern Hemisphere is warming up, at least where I am on the south coast of England. But uh, beautiful presentation. Oh, look at it. It doesn't look real. It looks so good. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, yeah, so great. Great looking piece. Nice to see a field watch uh, used for its application out there in the wild. And I think we've gone through all of these so far. Yeah, Commando and the skis. So next up, we're jumping to Deer Artifact. Really awesome, really awesome model. You know I love my field watches, and a lot of us here do. I featured the little Smiths Everest at the beginning of the show. What I, what I enjoy the most about this brand in particular is that it's taking nuance from many different sources and combining some of the best aspects together to get a result that is very unconventional. But to the watch enthusiast, you can easily pinpoint where all the parts come from, and that's always well worth looking at. You know, it's, it's a talking point, some character traits that you can appreciate. Um, great effort, got to say, got to say. Right, brushed bezel is cool. It sure is. Polished flank is also very nice. Think of what this would be like with an Explorer arrangement. Think of the, the standard Explorer dial with a brushed top to the bezel. It just makes a bit more sense, you know what I mean? Uh, Nefer Neferion mentioning Commando is a terrible name for a watch. <laughs> it sure is, got to say. it's uh, It's got a lot of stigma to it. I mean, I learned the history behind the name Commando. It might fascinate you. I think Eric Bell actually summed it up for us. Okay, let's get to Dear Artifact. We know Dear Artifact as the gentleman who sends in a, the best wrist shot shots. Follow him on Instagram. I think I've plugged him about 15 times in the past. I'm going to do it again uh, at Dear Artifact. Oh, dear. The alcohol is obviously working. I can't type. Go onto Instagram, follow him. You will not be disappointed. He has an excellent taste. His photography is off the charts. I think each one of these shots is like 10 megabytes in size. And we can zoom right in and see every single freckle, every single love them i mean he's got when it comes to fashion as well he knows his stuff i mean this is alpine green sort of british racing green but i feel more like this is an alpine green color that he's matched here gilt dial black bear 58 i think nothing will beat the original as much as the interest goes to the the navies and now the sterling silvers and, and everything there there's something about the original that's just uh it just works we need more gilt dial watches you heard it here first uh, taking another hit from the Glen Morangy, the confidence juice. A very understated, flawless depth of field. Are we talking about the watch? Are we talking about the photography there, Eric? <laughs> I, think, I think you're putting both in one. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's it's time. Look at the quality. I mean, I mean, you can zoom right in and see the texture on the. I mean, it's, cr it's so cool. Dear artifact, you could have your own show. I mean, just fe we could just slideshow feature your watches. It's just such great eye candy for all of us, you know. Yeah, well done, Eric. That was good. I, I didn't catch that in the beginning. Um, so only if you're wearing that watch, yeah. And your artifact says, too kind. Um, always a pleasure. Oh, it's a pleasure sharing your stuff, really. Clean shots, as Russell says. It's uh, it's nuts. So good. Not done yet. We've got one more. Another contextual shot. Yeah, I mean, when we talk about the beta watch, the watch that you buy to use, abuse, have fun, enjoy, there, it's it's understandable why there is so much mass appeal around these watches. This is not, I mean, just when we talk about importance of wearing watches you love, we're dabbling back to that old title. <laughs> um, ignore the hype and, and that. It's something when you can get a brand that's got an in-house movement that everything is virtually made by the same company, you know. And, you know, it's, it's using those old aesthetics from the classic subs from back in the day in its own way. Uh, but still manages to be its own thing with the snowflake hand and those elements. Very similar to the um, the SPB 143 Seiko Prospects. You're going to see one a bit later on. Uh, very good versus series when you compare the two watches. How beautiful are these photos, though? I mean, yeah, it's nuts. Uh, Eric asking, missed what I was drinking. It's a Glen Morangy original. Just the good old faithful standard. I could slide up and get it quickly. Let's see if I can. Uh, there. Just the standard. I think this is my last bottle. I've got to, got to go back and pull some more up. I was actually going to be having a Guinness, but then thought carbonated drink, doing a live show, probably wouldn't end very well. Uh, so yeah, awesome shots as always, dear Artifact. We love them. Keep sharing. 
and follow him on Instagram. You will not be disappointed. Uh, Chris is asking if I tried Talisker. I haven't. There's so many. I mean, my story is that coming out of a country where it's wine, very wine centered, uh, I've made it a pact that I would be testing out the whiskeys when I come to the Northern Hemisphere. So that's the plan. So no, I've still got lots of whiskeys to try. That's all I can say. Uh, jumping to Davinda next. And this, this is, oh, no, I mean, this is what I love about these shows. Alphabetical order. And you go from one watch to another. You go from a Seiko to suddenly a Patek 5396, white gold, on a bracelet. When do you ever see this? Davinda, um, this one really took me by surprise. I've got to say, everything, I mean, the five, the 5396 is simply... Oh, it's so good. It's such a good watch. It's one of my favorites. I, I think it's an annual. It's not a perpetual. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it's a lefty. You're right, Turbo. It's a left shot. There's another thing that caught my attention. So he's also a lefty, which is a joy. It's nice to see uh, the, 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 the minority getting some, some wrist time. But everything about this watch, the balance, the... Uh... Speaking of which, now this is one of the first Pateks that we're looking at for the show, I think. Um... They had some amazing releases this year. Check out Revolution Watch. Do that right now. Open up a tab and look at Waco's discussion around the Patek releases from Watches and Wonders. Just his, his wealth of knowledge when it comes to reference numbers and everything there. Do it. There is so much information around these pieces. And they did some good stuff. Like they've just now for the first time released a full calendar arrangement in one plane. So you've got the day, date, month all there in one spot, which is really nice. Of course, the green dial Nautilus is something. We can talk about that. We can we have feature a few Nautiluses later on. Uh, Luke mentioning, I'm in North, uh, Northwestern Montana, Glacier National Park. Okay, what's your email? Love to send some. For sure. Luke, my, my email is in the description um, of this video. If you go scroll down a little bit, you'll see uh, it's it's on the second line of the description of the show, but also if you hit show more, it's all there, my, my links and, and all that stuff. So by all means, um, yeah, this... Uh, I don't even know what the color of this dial is. I'm pretty sure it's a dark blue, but I've never seen this this configuration with white gold before. Very rare. Um, Megan says I don't think I'll ever understand Patek. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's the thing. It's it's very classically focused. But then we look at watches like Breguet. We look at the brand like Breguet, and we do feel a draw to those inspired pieces. Uh, it's all it's different strokes. Like like the case with with anything out there, um, I what I really enjoy about this one in particular being pretty much the king of Calatravas. I think most of us can agree there is that balance on the dial. Uh, I'm not a fan of the fact that they're white windows. I'd love to see them matched, but I know Patek doesn't do that. But it's it's so nice seeing everything that's logically arranged. You know, Friday, April twenty third. You got the moon phase. Uh, it's it's just clean. Clean, clear. The 24-hour scale is a little bit meh. I mean, when would you need that on a watch? It's a little bit more of a talking point more than anything else. The moon phase is cool. But just the the detail, I think the attention to detail is nice. And yeah, as far as an arrangement goes, pretty awesome. Oh, you also sent a movement shot. Oh, cool. Check it out. I have never seen an, a bracelet like this on this model before. It looks the business. It looks like it's actually secured with a with a screw at the back there too. And it's a Patek seal, of course. This is post um, the whole Geneva seal era. Yeah, it looks good. Really nice. You've got to admit, the movements are stunning. If you don't like the, the arrangement of, of the, the watch, movement looks beautiful. Okay, lots of things going on in the chat. Uh, blue is so refined. Blue uh, as a color. It's, isn't it funny how that is now almost going out of fashion? <laughs> Everyone's looking at green. Yeah, it's good fun. It is good, good fun. Um, uh, Turbo T2, the vertical alignment is so pleasing. It is. That's. I think that's what speaks to me about it in the majority. Um, the Hunt for Red October, Sunburst Blue. Thank you. Um, that was from Yar. Chris Smith, Talisker is more your smoky peaty whiskey. Okay. I've been enjoying Highland Park a lot, so I'm sure I would appreciate it. I am such a fan of the fruity stuff, though. I love the whiskeys that have the uh, the more, you know, orange, banana, mint sort of tastes to them that's why i've really been latching on to glen morangy i need to get another la santa and i need to get the next step which is the um the green bottle what's it called the green box 
uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I did I did earlier today. I was talking about it. 5107 King of Trail. Hans, it's a great piece. I, we have featured it a couple of times before, that variant. Gold bracelet with full overclass. Sapphire. Oh, awesome. Samurai is actually giving us a description of this piece. Uh, let's get further into the movement for you to have a look at while I refer to the comments. Uh, gold bracelet with fold over clasp, sapphire crystal back, water resistant to 30 meters. I mean, this is the, the epitome, the epitome of a dive watch, wouldn't you say? White gold case, uh, diameter 38.5. Good size, really good size too. I thought it was smaller. Yes, stunning. We're not done yet though. Avert your eyes, ladies and gentlemen, because we are going to be looking at one of the most divisive in the Calatrava category. Now, there's some here who own this watch, <coughs> Russell. Uh, there are others who, I don't know, this, this is the 6000 G. I thought these were the 6006. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm terrible, terrible with references. But this watch, I think, evokes the, uh, the quality of a casino watch, you know? The way the dial is done is, is playful, which is very unlike what we normally see, especially in the Calatrava line. This and the Pilot Calatravas are the two of the most bizarre, I think, out there. Even the 5212, which is that Mayan calendar looking piece, doesn't look anywhere near as crazy as this one does, I don't think. Um, 6000 G. Thank you, Flieger. Yeah, so uh, M for murder. This is Patrick Flieger. Yeah, Norcal. It's a, it's a strange monster. Got the moon phase into... No, sorry, it's not a moon phase. It's a pointed date. I always think of the moon when I see that. So it's a pointed date arrangement. You've got a sub dial on the left-hand side, right-hand right hand side. See what happens when you're kind of ambidextrous. You can't tell your left or your, your right. Nice looking piece. A little bit busy, but it is a, it's a cool machine. And I think Davinda wanted to know opinions on this watch. I think he just picked this up too recently. Uh, it's a white gold model, not stainless steel. And so it goes, 37.5 mils, as mentioned by, by Yah. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we've, we've had a good look at Patek. It's, uh, it's fun. These, these shows really do go all over the place. Looks like a 6006. Uh, yeah, I think the 6006 is in steel. No, I, I'm, again, this, this is so out of my pay grade. <laughs> uh, yeah, good fun, though crazy machine casino dial arrangement which is fun and it's it's very different to what we normally see it's not tradition that's it matthew the quinta ruben that's the next one i need to get onto. apparently it's very good and it's like 43 percent 43 percent sounds like such a good time gotta get a quinta ruben next okay right carrying on carrying on to demetrius i like this story the watch is cool, but the story behind the watch is even better. So it's a it's a Pam 104, early 2000s. And as you can see, we actually have a few Panerai coming up in a moment. Uh, as you can see, this watch looks like it's been used. The busiest, Justin says, the busiest of Pateks. Absolutely. I, I mean, it's, it's just all over the place. But then look at the 5212. And uh, debatable, actually. The 5212 is a... Is a, is a mess, but it's it's an awesome watch too. I love it. The Mayan calendar, you know. So this is the typical Luminor Marina arrangement. You know, you've got that the crown guard system that is the quirk, but also is the the classic, the typical arrangement. You've got a cyclops. I think it's a reverse cyclops, so it's under the crystal subdial arrangement. But what I liked the most, this is it on his wrist. Let me get to the story. I'll read the story out while the watch is on the screen. Oh no. No, no, come back. What's a better shot? This is a better shot to look at for a sec. Magic Mouse, you are the pits. So, uh, Pam 104, he was wearing this watch. So, this, so Demetrius bought this watch from a friend of his, very, clo very close friend of his. And he says he's, his friend has been wearing this watch since 2007, continuously, and suddenly he decided to sell it. And he says in the email, of course, I would never accept to let this watch go away from the family, in quotations. So he bought this watch from his friend, and he's just rocking it. And he also mentioned in the same email, look at that shot. As most of us know, Demetrius is based in Greece. So there's Greece. Got to love it. It's very upsetting to see such a beautiful setting. Someone who comes from the, north, from the southern hemisphere, I can, uh, can agree. Pam, same day, bought the 39 millimeter. Oh, this is cool. So he got this watch. He bought this watch on the 7th of April. 
right? And that was the day of the, the new Rolex releases. And he says the same day he bought a 39 millimeter Explorer the day it was discontinued on the 7th of April. I hope it says that on the cards, Demetrius, because that, that would be cool. 7th of April, the day it was discontinued, is always rare and attractive. As Curtis, if he's in the chat with us, Curtis will also agree. Uh, getting a watch the day it's discontinued is always a joy. One of the last of the last, you know? Yeah, typical Panerai arrangement. Um, I, I'm i really drawn to the reference to the PAM 233. It's either the 233 or the 223. It's an eight-day power reserve GMT. <laughs> Guys are talking about drumming now, and I love it. We've got we've got a band. <laughs> we've got a band in the chat. Hey, if you need a singer, I'm pretty good at lead singing, uh, Hans. Uh, so we've got lead guitar, rhythm guitar. I can I can also help with rhythm if you like. Bassists got a drum. That's fun, eh? How cool is that? Yeah, I can be the acoustic rhythm in the background if you like, uh, or the strat player. I can be the I can be the strat guy who you cannot hear over the sound of the, the, the Les Pauls and the, you know, you know, the bigger pickups hitting the coffee. I actually love seeing how a polished watch gets that little bit of patina over time. It's great. It's really, really nice. And yeah, there we go. We've got a first, first Panerai of the show, I think. And we do have a few more coming up a bit later, radio mirrors and the like. Um, Russell, I don't know, we're talking about, I, I saw you mention the 5212 is a beautiful mess. <clears throat> it's on the card. Oh, that is cool, Demetrius. So this, so yeah, he got the watch. That's special. You can probably, if, if the day ever comes that you want to sell that watch, uh, you can probably ask a little bit more for it being sold on the discontinuation day. Pretty nice. <laughs> Thomas has got drum machines. I can play the triangle. Hey, Mark, you always need someone in the background with a triangle. Don't don't bash the triangle. It's all good. I love jazz flute. Yeah, you guys, it's good. Okay, I'm hitting the coffee. Hitting the coffee. Mm. If you need a pianist, I can also do that. I, uh, I cut my chops playing piano back in the day. Yeah, nice little piece. Also, superb shot. We can appreciate all the little specs, all the little details here. Moving next to Dr. Bob. And we were just talking about guitar and music, right? Sausage loom. <laughs> Don't know. Justin, yes, it is. This this is not a sandwich dial. This is uh I don't know why these aren't sandwich dials. Maybe someone can give us a bit of a history lesson, but sausage loom plots. I'm pretty sure that's what they call them too. Uh we're gonna jump to a guitar in the background. Let's have a look. Should I have a look at the distant shot? <clears throat> Most of us can probably guess what this guitar is if you know your instruments. So I'll just leave that every for everyone in the chat too. Actually, I'll leave it on the screen for a sec. Uh Quick enough, I think most of us will know, especially Hans and Eric. And we jump to one of my favorite modern speedmasters. This thing, yeah, PRS. I mean, it's Paul Reedsmith. It's a, it's a gem. He's doing some good stuff. Hey? His his guitars are so so cool. Uh, right. So jumping to the, I'm guessing this. I'm I'm thinking I'm getting this right. It's the Apollo Eight Dark Side of the Moon. That's the the reference. By far one of my favorite models in the line. Uh, because it's got it's got the personality, it's got the fun, it's got the prototype arrangement to it, you know. Omega Night Nighthawk, I like that. I like that. Yeah, it's got the accent colors, but then it's also got depth to it, you know. It's it's the the texture to the dial and the applied elements there, and what's not to like, really? When you think of the modern Speedmaster, isn't it nice to see it going in a direction that's not conventional? Uh, it's good. It's good. And there's another closer shot, I think. And we do have a case back shot that we can enjoy. Dr. Bob has sent some cool stuff in the past. I think he always has a PRS or a, I think he has a Les Paul that he shared at one stage. Uh, and he sent some Nautiluses into us and a couple of other pieces. But uh, what a cool watch. I mean, I would, I'm not a fan of, of all black watches, but I mean, there's some rare exceptions. And this one is just... Awesome. That moon texture on it and how it's all arranged there. It looks like such a cool instrument, you know? <laughs> Time for toast. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in the chat. I mean, this is what happens. As we start going on, so the delirium kicks in and, and there it is. Curtis, uh, yes, yeah, the sub from 114060 arrived on the 31st of July, the day before the new model was released. And that's special. Huh? Very seldom do you hear stories like that. Uh, 
Dr. Bob is in the chat with us. This is my pseudo Berthia watch, 1968. <laughs> oh, can you imagine finding a Speedmaster from 68 to cap it off? There is something, if, if Sam is still with us in the chat, um, there is something, I think he bought his brother a Berthia Speedy. <clears throat> and there's something about, I think his brother is an architect. I remember, if you remember it right. And his brother is not a fan of watches, but when he, when he bought it for his brother, it was just like the perfect thing. A Berthia Speedmaster has such a nice ring to it, I think. Um, Han saying we are older. Oh, now we're getting ageist. It's going to be good. Uh, what strings are on it? Eric is asking. Yeah, they're not. They look like some solid bronze strings. I'm interested, actually. Very interested in knowing. Um, dear Daria, I don't know. They, they might be a bit uh, out of left field. The nine o'clock subdial looks like yin yang. Does it? Hold on a sec. The nine o'clock subdial. Whoa, very good eye there. Check that cutaway. It's so nice, man. I just, I'm always drawn back to it. That's, I mean, talking about wearing watches we love. I, I guess we're still continuing the title. Um, something about the watch that always draws me back to look at it more. This is one of the pieces that I would always just be fascinated in, looking at all the textures and all the, the racing minute track and uh, the yellow accents. And oh, it's so good. It's so, so good. Uh, do we have any more shots? I think that's all of them. Oh, of course, we have the case back. Ooh, very nice Tiger's Eye finish on the PRS. Nice bridge, too. Very cool. Got a trim system. Ah, nice. So we have a look at the case back. And again, we've got texture to the movement. Uh, we'll see you on the other side. Uh, 1968 actually has the day. Imagine, imagine you were born December 1968. Birth, like, birth month watch. That's awesome. So Neferon says I'm a young pup. Yeah, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still pretty young, got to say. Uh, it's a good thing, maybe, I guess. Uh, Gold-plated strings by Optima. I've never heard of that. Eric, have you heard of that before? Gold-plated strings. Awesome. Um, awesome looking movement. Hey, look at that arrangement. 1869. Great texture. Seven, how does it say? Uh, something teen, 19 jewels, I think. Yeah. I mean, there's lots to appreciate and enjoy. This is a full ceramic case, if I'm not wrong, too. Yeah, it's awesome. It really is nice. Hitting the coffee again. <clears throat> Guys are tra chatting about Silverstone track days. Oh, Russell has a very, very charming 430 Scuderia, which is my favorite, actually. It's my favorite Ferrari in the modern catalog. Uh, this was, oh, thank you, Dr. Bob. We're jumping to Dylan next. 121 click bezel, and he takes these awesome off-angle uh, loom shots. He shared a series of them for us to enjoy. He's a pilot, so he loves his, his flying pieces, and this is an Air King. Uh, Chatting about the F430, that uh, designed by, um, oh no, Frank, not Frank. Is it Frank? What's his damn name? It's on the tip of my tongue, I, I studied a lot of his work from back in the day. He had some really great, great projects. Uh, 430 Scuderia is just one of those cars. This is when I was, you know, coming up as a youngster. Seeing that car and how great its its figure was how it pulled a lot of past inspirations in and still looks timeless today those early 2000s cars were just just amazing frank frank stevenson right that's it no i'm trying to trying to remember oh once you hit the, the near two hour mark my brain starts going a bit fuzzy yeah talking now about so so what's going on in the chat we're chatting about cars we've got f430s we've got guitar strings we've got uh Aren't buckles on ceramic on I, I've, I have no idea Mason talking about ceramic buckles it is Frank Stevenson thank you Sam Ray um, and he's done some good stuff hey eh? I mean the Fiat 500 he re he recalibrated the the first BMW x3 uh, SUV uh, the 999 megabytes oh Thomas that's great I tell you what we could easily start a band and do like a live stream somehow and and synchronize everything up <laughs> that'd be fun uh i love it 999 megabytes that's awesome thomas thank you for the super chat too that's so cool and and megan and, and russell are chatting all about cars and two seaters and uh so it goes do you like the modern air king demetrius wants to know my opinion on the modern air king uh, i i you know it falls into the same category as the milgas i think it's one of those just 
I mean, when we think of the climate when this watch was released, very much like a parts bin special, we could say, with the way that the the gold numerals were trans transferred across from the uh, the first Gen two one four two seven zero. Uh, I love the thing I love about the Air King is that it does have the Flieger feeling to it with the way the numerals have been done. This is the only watch out there that has the numeral arrangement like it is. And the only one out there that has a yellow coronet, green accents for the Rolex name, green hand. But it does feel very much like it's in that same Milgas territory where you either love it or hate it. Um, in my case, I wouldn't be able to wear it. So 40 mil is a little bit large in this format for me. I think it also uses the Milgauss case, which is slightly thicker, the case back especially. No, I think it's just the case. It's a little bit thicker. Um, so yeah, it's it's divisive. It's I love the history of the Air King more than anything else. Cheese on toast is being made. You guys are so lucky you can eat, and now I have to just sit here and present. Imagine me eating on air. Wouldn't that be a laugh? Now we're chatting about cars. We've got Koenigsegg. Uh, that's a good idea. Okay, if you could have one car, put that in the chat. That should be fun. I need to think because I am quite the car nut. Mm. If you could have one supercar in the world, what would you do? Basically horrible phrases. <laughs> I mean, you know my, my feelings around the zero and the five on this dial and how the spacing works. But I mean, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, F40. Huayra, that's a cool P, that's a cool car. 911 Turbo S, Dino, ooh, that's nice. McLaren F1. Okay, we have some fun with this. Uh, moving to the next, we've got a Seamaster Professional. This is a beautiful shot. If Design Atelier is watching, this is his favorite. He really wants to get one of these pieces soon. It's the, uh, the blue bezel with the silver dial. Alpha 8C, good shot there from George. Um, Thomas saying, lovely photo. It's beautiful. These, All of these shots, I think these off-angle shots are stunning. AMG GTC Coupe, and very nice. Uh, GT2 RS, Megan has her dream car already. Yeah. RX-7 with an LS swap. Wow, okay. Got some rotaries going on. Maserati. That was my dad's first word, would you believe, growing up? That was his first word. Not like, not mum or dad. It was Maserati. Uh, Loom is amazing. Yeah, Bugatti. Oh, God, grief. Uh, best Seamaster shot ever. It's cool. I dig it, Eric. Really is nice. Um, this is good. So I'm like jumping between. I've got GC3s, boring Porsche 911 Targa 4. I love the 4S. It's not boring at all. The 4S for me, the Targa, the way they've done that roof. I hated the earlier Targas from the from the 80s. But what they've done with the new one, oh, it's a dream. Not done yet. We've got an IWC with a gorgeous sector dial arrangement. Look at these shots. Uh, let's carry on. What else is happening? Robin Reliance. Wow, Matt, that's brave. Uh, Chiron would be cool. <laughs> uh, a Lada, Porsche 928. Really, j -Braff. Interesting. Uh, Porsche 718. That's cool. Jaguar XJ. Okay, that's cool. Zonda. <laughs> Having a good time. Uh, Aston Martin DB4 GT Zagato. I mean, a Zagato. Any Zagato is a, is a dream. 1993 Dodge. Brabus EV12. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This man has the photographic speed spot. I don't know how he does these, by the way. Dylan, these presentations, uh, you've done this a couple of times before, but the way you've you've got the UV light going on in the background and you can pick up all these micro details. I do love his taste in watches. All of these, these pieces scream him, you know? We've got Seamaster, which is kind of generic, but it's not the typical one. It has the same silver dial that you see on his IWC. Uh, and an Air King, which is just a typical pilot's watch. It's the real class act. Thomas Renault 5. Good shout, Thomas. That, yes, yes. I have a Renault 5, actually, uh, one of my neighbors. <laughs> they parked one outside the other day. Black. Oh, my. What a what a car to look at. Uh, gee, there's 275 Merc 3, 300SL. We've got a Volvo 240 McLaren F1. This is this is cool. Voxel. <laughs> Lamborghini Espada. That's, wow, okay. Datsun 200. Okay. It's good. I'm enjoying this. Jeez. What the hell would I want? That's the question. There's so much. R8. I've driven an R8, Matt. They are special. I drove one of the last manual V10 R8s. Whew, that was cool. Would love the Aston DB5. James. Sorry, James Bond from Megan. Yep. That those cars were also amazing story behind those too. Okay, we've got to move off from this and move next to also just sitting on cars. Uh, Eric Bell. Uh, what, what was this about again? So we have uh, modding. So Eric Bell says the process of modding your watch, this was him re-looming the dial of the piece. 
and he says, do not mod your watch. It's, it's a disaster. It's a travesty. I love the hairs. Check it out. You got some, got some texture in there. You know, it was about adding character to watches, and this is the way you do it, right? Uh, Eric has shared modifications he's done to his G-Shocks in the past with oil filling. And then this shot is great. Um, I called this the abominable because it looks like, I mean, this is one hell of a footprint. Uh, yeah, talk about modding watches. This looks like you've taken a blowtorch to the bezel, Eric. I love it. I love it. Good, good fun. I'll leave this on the screen for a sec while getting back to the cars. We've got Spitfires, uh, F12. That's really cool. TDF, yep. Bigfoot sighting, right? Right? I said that too. I said that too. DB5, Triumph, uh, Mustang Mark 1. What a car. Love, love the original Mustangs. Ooh, Lamborghini Huracan from Performante. Toyota Tacoma. It's it's so difficult. What what should I say? You and Tim need to talk cars. I mean, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a real fan. Look, my I'm a diehard when it comes to Volkswagen Beetles. I, I love, I mean, I mean, grew up rebuilding them, you know? So there's something about, not restoring, by the way, customizing, modifying, putting proper suspension on them, you know, proper engines, twin Weber carbs. Okay, moving on. Eric, love your Casio mod. I personally love the hair in there for texture. It just adds that little bit more character. Corvette 1967. Ooh, is that the Stingray? Is that the original Stingray? That's great. Okay, now we're jumping to Fabio with a Black Bay on an NDC. And I wanted to hold on to this for a second because he's wearing a very nice jacket. And we were just chatting. Didn't I just say Stingray? Now we're looking at a Barracuda jacket. That worked out pretty well. Jensen Interceptor. Mm, got a bit of James Bond going on there. Ford F-150. <laughs> just take the bus. <laughs> Uh, it's so good. I love it. Some nice comments. We really, I like the fact that we got such varied tastes in cars. That's the beauty. Batmobile, Gordon Murray T50. Ooh, Russell. Now we're talking. The T50 looks like such. I mean, it's naturally aspirated 12. Ooh, it looks good. It's it's just a no nonsense machine. I hope it just it just kills it. Um, road trip combi dual windscreen. Oh, same same as me, Megan. Um, had some good experience with those. I love the split windows. Um, oh, they're amazing. So much fun. Roadrunner. Love the G9. Yeah, so we're chatting about Barracuda jackets. <clears throat> this is a bit of a shameless plug, but I, I have three of them at the moment. <laughs> uh, navy, olive drab, and like desert khaki color. Uh, the one that I love the most is the navy. Oops. But the navy doesn't fit me, so I've got to sell it. But uh, these, for anyone out there, check out. Barracuda G9 jackets. They are awesome for summer. They have a really nice tartan lining inside. And uh, yeah, we're talking about NDC straps. Some of the best in the biz. Gilt dial uh, Black Bay. I think this is Fabio's first submission that he sent in to us, but uh, it's cool. I like the pairing. You, I, I like your style. Uh, meat and pizza. We've got a Saab 96. How's that? Okay. That's not a Valkyrie. Probably one of the most beautiful sounding cars on the road at the moment. Um, at 300 SL Gullwing. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Mark. The classic Gullwing. Uh, Nico Rosberg, I think, bought that car to celebrate his uh, retirement. There's there's so many. I mean, it's it's just like watches in a way. You know, we're talking about our love for the variety of watches out there. Uh, but then you think of cars and the same thing applies with what brand you like. Funny enough, you know what I haven't seen? No one interested in BMWs in the chat. BMW 2002, say. That's one of my favorites. Um, hell, when I think of just pure driver's experience, I'd love a Lotus 7. Not, not a, we're not talking Catrum, getting a proper Lotus 7 and just going nuts, putting a stupid, like a two, a two liter, <laughs> something crazy in it. Um, what else? Uh, would like a Lancia Stratos, one of the originals, maybe. Uh, I think the Group B rally cars get a get a five cylinder Audi S1 Quattro and just strip it out and just go nuts. Roll cage, do the full the full treatment. Oh, there's so many things. I mean, BMW M1, those were divisive to say the least. Great, great love for Toyota and everything there. We can just chat about cars as we look at watches. Isn't that cool? Okay, Fabio, thank you for this. Gotta love our black bears. Moving to Freddy next. And he sends in, this was good. He sent in a, a set of uh, Vacherons to enjoy. 
On the right-hand side, we have the Gen 1 overseas, and we're going to focus in on this in a later stage. I'm actually surprised it's not up here now, coming up soon. It's not. We'll see it eventually. But uh, this he picked up for a stupidly reasonable price, and it's, it's a white gold case and everything there. And then this is one of the most beautiful we've actually featured. It's got a starburst dial to it and all sorts. Um, so here is a range of Asherons all of a sudden, a 1956 manual wind ultra thin five millimeter that's on the left hand side uh middle we have a 1972 automatic ultra thin far right we have a 99 overseas gen one vacheron very vatican inspired but uh still our gems and now the chat has just completely turned into carholic central i'm sorry everyone i'm so sorry that i did that <laughs> what do i think of the ford bronco Sad thing is, uh, coming out of the Southern Hemisphere, I've never been one to follow American cars. I, I know the, the Plymouth Harry Cudas and the and the Chevs and uh, the Mustangs and all those, but I've never been. Bronco is a pickup, right, Kumaistra? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the most well versed. I'm more of a European follower <laughs> more than anything else. Uh, Jay Jay with a McLaren logo for his uh, his avatar once the E46. Those are cool, really cool M3s flies in your teeth uh this is, it's just completely gone nuts megan was mentioned something in the chat about uh combi down traveling yeah for sure i'm not even gonna read that out loud i'm not gonna do innuendos um ah, it's good fun i love it i love it and curtis with his healy curtis by all means share share the story of your austin healy in the chat that's an awesome car the precursor to the shelby cobra and such amazing history the way they did the windows of those cars those front windows fascinated me that day you explained it to me. Um, I really dig these Gen 1 overseas. They are quite underrated. They are very much sleepers, and they've established the language. We're actually going to see a Gen 3 later on, as you would expect. We always end up having a Vacheron overseas Gen 3. Uh, this is a 36 mil, I think, and we could have a spotlight on this model. This one I would love to feature again. Freddie Turner, if you're in the chat, want to feature this watch again this has the most beautiful dial he took this to the vacheron boutique in london and everyone was gawking over this because it's so unique it's one i think it's a one-off has this beautiful glittery starburst dial to it amazing okay jumping next to flieger b and wouldn't you believe this is not uh, uh 121 dylan we are going to another fellow pilot and he is also rocking an air king it's great to see that the Air King gets love from pilots. Um, Vatican Gen 1, Gen 3. <laughs> I love it, Megan. Thank you for that. Um, and Grand Sicko, thanks for the super chat. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the banter around 1969 Corvettes and, and RS200. That is, oof, got to love a Ford Escort. Cosworths, that's a beauty. Got nothing nothing better than a good Cosy. Uh, Broncos, and I don't know what's going on. I've got Road Warrior. I've got, you know, it's just nuts. Great chat, though. I'm enjoying it. Talking about cars while having watches on screen. <laughs> uh, stunning yellow. Yeah, um, Russell, I hope to feature it again. We have featured, given it a spotlight before, this watch needs a lot more love. Insanely cool. 1956, mint condition, and one of the most beautiful dials. Also, something important about the movements is they're all, I think, Le Coutre inspired. I think JLC basically provided all of these movements um, that Vacheron modified them in a few places I, the, the, again movements and specs for me so we get to see this watch in direct light and i don't know if it's a matte dial or a glass dial but uh it's uh it's a charmer it's a charming watch it's definitely a character and we jump to another now as most of us probably know flieger b he flies boeing triple sevens he uh he likes his gmts and uh chatting about two-tone watches the chnr is a Really awesome model in this line. Cars and watches go hand in hand. Oh, the Mura Raymond. Stop it. Stop it. What a, I love the story behind that car. Literally designed and made by like 21 year olds. Uh, yeah, Megan, I agree. Cars and watches will they just work. It just works. Nobody really gets, hold on a sec, B Dev, nobody really gets the look of the Air King until they see the dashboard of a Bloodhound. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Huh? Um, the whole Flieger dial arrangement. I'm pretty sure it also has a triangle at the 12. The Bloodhound was the, the land speed record maker, right? Yeah, very good point. I think someone should open up a Google tab and have a look at that. Uh, very good aspect. 
And then we get to the CHNR. I've got to love two-tone rose gold. Isn't it funny how we get to see these segments of Rolex specific? Yeah, I love it. The Zombie 222, 1968 Mustang turned into a high-powered electric car. And this is the thing. This is where the era is now going. We were chatting about how technology is evolving in cars and stuff. I think there's lots of merit behind electrifying certain cars out there. Uh, oops, hold on a sec. This is on the runway, I can see. And we're rocking an Explorer 2, the original Polar. Gotta love it. Um, for some cars, I think there is some merit to, I mean, not some of the most iconic classic cars you definitely don't want to butcher with electric components. But I think of a of a sleeper, a real sleeper car that you would expect has, you know, 20 horsepower on a good day. And then you just, just absolutely, oh, can you imagine just being left awestruck seeing this little thing take off like 100 miles an hour? Megan mentioning, love my two-tone watches or bi-tone, as the English call them. Do they call them bi-tone metal? That's something new to me, Megan. Uh, yeah, they're special. They do have, they deserve their own place. If, if given the chance, I think the two-tone root beer GMT would be the one on my list. I think it is a charming model, very subtle understated, very classic, but also moving in a more modern direction. And it's it's something you can wear without it really catching attention. The e-tron, I mean, that's cool, right? I still haven't guessed my car that I would like as a one car. It's like, it's like asking someone to choose their children, you know, favorite child. Same with watches. I mean, how can you choose a car that is is the one that you would be settled with for the rest of your life, say? Uh, A.O. Vermont says it's beautiful. The root beer is beautiful. In a modern package, they've done such a good job there. Electric DeLorean seems fitting. Yeah, I mean, that's probably one of the best examples. I'm pretty sure they've done that, though. I'm pretty sure that's something that's happened. Um, maybe a week of car picks from followers in future, Mr. G. Roberts. That sounds like a good idea. Um, don't know how it would integrate. We've actually had segments in the past where I, I discussed cars as, as a design evolution exercise talking around to our subjects i can't remember more coffee hold on <clears throat> more coffee to the brain we've been running the show now for 116 minutes almost at the two hour mark damien mentioning lotus elise I, do you know what's funny i cannot fit in a lotus elise i uh, i had a <laughs> i sat i went to an upholsterer and sat in one and it was very funny uh, same with with cars like mx5s cannot fit in them just impossible. <laughs> it's really funny, you know, when you've got when you're six foot plus, your your head scrapes the roof. And um, so, chatting about the Explorer Two, it's a gem. This one looks like it's seen a bit of life, a bit of experience. Uh, this will always be. And I mean, we were chatting about the releases earlier on. Yeah, this one, this one is definitely one that that deserves to stay in that category. I don't know. We we're actually chatting about September releases, and Megan mentioned. I think there is a there is a majority agreement that by September this year we're going to see a green something, some anniversary model around this watch released. Who knows? There's really no knowing with uh, with brands. Okay, going to hop next to a Kermit. How's that? Got some contextual shots. This is, uh, I think, in the plane. I really can't tell you. It could be on a mountain or it could be in the plane. <laughs> but uh, we've got a Kermit. I mean, this is such a good shot of the watch too. Uh, and there was mention in the chat earlier about Kermit's being uh, more appreciated than the ceramics. Um, so Megan says, all the YouTube content, United, YouTube creators from the United Kingdom often refer to two-tone watches as bi-tone metal watches that I've watched lately. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's like Americanisms, like aluminum. Uh, it's, I guess it's something that becomes a part of the... Uh, the nomenclature, is that the word? Isogrypho, is that a car, Raymond? I don't know that one. Maybe I'm completely wrong. And now guys are predicting when when the show is going to end. We've got one one forty four thirty five. We're we chatting about the, how much time has elapsed. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, my car, a Ford XR8, power amps under the seat. You know what? Megan mentioned the, uh, the split window um, combi. Or a mini, what would you call it in the in the north? Uh, a van, VW van, those originals. I would most definitely suit that up with uh, proper suspension, proper brakes, Recaro seats, and everything, and then have 
sound system in the back for for everything there. That's just it feels right, you know. But keep it very subtle, sleeper in the style. Hit the Glen Morangi, and I'm back. Uh, Chatting more about radials on MX-5s, and oh my goodness, the chat is just listed because it's so funny. Nicer than the Hulk. I mean, it is a lot more subtle. The aluminium bezel just has a charm of its own, man. I think there is so much to it that is lost when we look at ceramic. You'll see this watch age over time. Um, it shows its age like the rest of the watch does. The steel, everything there, and um, it's just a different character trait that I think ceramic is cool. But I, I mean, I did that video about the positives and negatives on bezel inserts and just try to discuss that at length, how oh, wow, this one just has a character all to itself. So yeah, we've chatted about it before. And this watch uh, here, I guess this was a, a Vostok, but I'd have no idea. Flieger, really cool arrangement though. We've got Air King on one side, Kermit on the other, and then looks like a common Dursky. Someone help me. Eric, you know these divers pretty well. Yeah, Megan, that's it. I mean, you could pretty much do a Porsche, complete Porsche swap with a combi body. Imagine that uh, Porsche chassis. We have individual suspension. We have huge roll bars, Porsche brakes, Porsche wheels, uh, the full package, Porsche engine. I mean, you could maybe electric electric fuel injection, do the whole thing. It's, it's a perfect idea. I mean, it is. There's just nothing wrong there. Split window Corvette. I must say the Stingray, the original Stingray for me has been one of those just absolutely just such a gem of a car. How's that? Someone who comes from the Southern Hemisphere who's been following European cars, Corvette Stingray, the original Gen 1. No, 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 the Gen 2. The Gen 1 had the funky headlights. The, the Gen 2 with the pop-up headlights, that would probably be one of my top. 1968-ish, I think, if I remember right. That car was just so ahead of its time. What a beautiful machine. Electric DeLoreans, but a 250 Zagato Ferrari might also be quite nice. You know, um, it's a Vostok Amphibia. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond and BDev and Flieger B. Um, really nice military case. I need to discuss Vostok in future. I mean, there are pretty special, pretty outlandish watches, and you can get them for such good prices too. Just fun. Watches need to be about fun and the importance of wearing watches you love. Let's uh, try and segue back in. Uh, here we have an Air King that is very much unloved by the majority on the right-hand side. We have a Kermit Submariner that is greatly appreciated for what it is, but is still very underrated. I wouldn't say it has that much attention next to the huge demand for the ceramics. And in the middle, we have a Vostok that's like 200 bucks and a dream machine, just something you can smash around, use as a daily. Um, anything can happen in the next half an hour. You guys are just, you guys are so full of confidence and faith. And it's, it's so nice to know that I have such a great support base. And uh, speaking of which, I'm going to hit the fishermen's because uh, the voice is going yet again. <laughs> just hit two hours. <laughs> Thank you guys for keeping track, Megan. And uh, Demetrius mentioning 2 a.m. in Greece. You have to go. It's been a pleasure having you here, Demetrius. Loved sharing your Panerai. And uh, yeah, these shows always just turn into something else, you know, chatting about music and cars and. It's it's great. It is really great. I love going on tangents. Um, Lotus Esprit. Now we're talking. Uh, love the scuba the scuba duda dial. Never heard of that one before, Raymond. Yeah, it's it's cool. And I'm as most of you know, I'm such a fan of quarter Arabics on watches. Anything with Arabic numerals immediately gets naughty points in my case. And uh, also enjoy that these numerals represent the same kind of typeface that you would see. Uh, with Russian text, which is nice. Yeah, it's good. Need to study up on these watches. There's so much. Funny enough, Megan, we're jumping to you next. We have got a, uh, now in the past, we have shared, what have we shared from Megan? What should I say? What haven't we shared? We've had all the big names, the Moses, the the Tourbillons, the MBNFs, the Laurent Ferriers, the Group of Forces, the, it just doesn't stop, right? It's been endless. So I decided let's, uh, Bring it down a couple of pegs and look at just a simple, no nonsense, released this year, I believe, or the end of last year, Longines Heritage Diver compressor case. She was trying this on in Sydney a couple of weeks back and thought it would be so nice. Many of us who were chatting about this watch, I think it came out in a blue dial and a brown dial format. This feels much more faithful to what we would see, you know, the original, the original machine. And I love it. I love it. 
Uh, it's a scuba dude. Okay, thanks, Bdev. Thank you. Um, interesting sharing of green with this collection. We're chatting about the, uh, the, the uh, from Flieger a second ago. Yeah, lighting, right? It's nice. Very nice. I'm, I'm completely missed that dear artifact. Anyone can maybe check back and have a look. Losing my voice is not an option. <laughs> Don't worry. We've had some real, we've had some serious, I'm trained at this point, uh, CW, I'm trained for when my voice goes. There is this protocol. I actually have the procedure sheet on the wall. There's six, six or seven uh, processes I have to go through to get the voice back. Uh, so don't worry. We're, we're safe. Right. So how cool is this watch? Uh, chatting again about Longines. Chatting again about watches that deserve a lot more attention. And here is an example of one. The I saw one of these vintage coming out of Peru for sale. And it went for a really good price. You can uh, you can really find vintage Longines for great prices out there today. And of course, this this resembles a tropical dial that you would expect from a watch like this of that time. And if we have a look at the side profile, she also shared this, which is great. We can see the lug length. That's one of the divisive elements with this piece, I think, is that the lugs can be a bit long, a little bit overextending, something like 50, 51, 52-ish mils. But uh, yeah, Longines, like I said in the beginning, their, their back catalog with their vintage pieces, they just can't do wrong. They can bring out anything. And the best part of all, actually an article was shared. I think Megan actually shared this article with me is that uh, the CEO is planning on doubling down on bringing these heritage watches further. They're going to further expand, look into their museum pieces again and, and just drive that uh, interest up. Because uh, yeah, like similar to, to Omega, they have so much in their back catalog to work with. And they just have such funky things assigned to this. This is a 50s era watch, I think, right? They've got these hash marks on the crown for, for ease of grip. Just quirks, you know, it quirks for days. I think it's a 42 mil. Um, and Raymond says, love my tuxedo. That tuxedo dial is, is one of the best they've done recently. Awesome. I love it how they just drop those things out of the blue. Um, so Nefarion, what's the procedure? book cockpits have for emergencies uh, have one of those for the stream yeah for 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 flying yeah for sure that's my emergency protocol head between the knees you know all that or just uh, lean over a doorway kiss your ass goodbye if you like oh, that was a cool looking piece uh, and just some another thing to to focus on which i love <clears throat> is typeface i think sam ray might have mentioned it a second ago that uh, he loves the core to arabics but look at i don't know if i can get the detail the best for you to see how about here at the 45 you see that there's some serifs on the numerals. There's serif on the four, serif on the five. Just those little micro touches that you don't get from watches today. They, they're they a brand that definitely appreciates their heritage. Eric Bell told me a great story that uh, this is one of the oldest logos for a watch brand in the world. The, the flag with the two crosses along it. Um, and just automatic text, cursive, it's beautiful. There's so much to like, to like and appreciate. Uh, talk about a classic retro-inspired diver that has proper history and uh, retro is hot at the moment. Yeah, Megan, I'm sure you'll be getting this for your birthday. I mean, it's a, it's a gem. Really, really cool piece. Um, Longjean taking a leaf out of Breitling's book. Yes, um, I think they've been doing it far longer, as far as I know, Mason. Um, sadly, if Brent is still in the chat, he picked up a 765 navigation this week and i didn't save it i said to myself save the watch it didn't happen so we'll have to feature it next week next show awesome though megan this is all i've saved from you this week so no mbnfs no hmf was hmf and all the other names we've featured in the past would you call this rare and special rare and attractive justin those are the those are the terms and unique got to add that too speaking of which phillips is having an auction in two weeks time Guess who's going to be running a marathon? Hmm, it's going to be good. Right, next up, Francois and Eglantine. Uh, Francois, and he's, he's shared a lot of these in the past, a lot of watches. He has taken a break from YouTube, so he sent me an email, and it's the first gen, 214270. Beautiful little watch. Big watch, I should say, 39 mil. But being the gen one, it has the solid gold numerals, which is nice. Um Yes, Brent, I should have saved it off the Discord. I'm sorry about that. Um, so look forward to talking about it, though. It's stunning. So uh, Oral Bucks, not again. Yeah, so it's. I think it's the Geneva show. It's the Geneva auction. They have some beautiful things lined up, got to say. Um, can't wait. I'm actually really looking forward to it. We can take the Mickey out of them again and again. 
unique, rare and attractive, rare and rare and rare as it is, medium rare. Uh, really cool piece. We've chatted about this watch enough. And funny, I'm starting to be quite drawn to this, you know, the character traits. This watch to me feels a bit like a, a, a puppy dog that needs love in the way it's done. This is the T-Rex. Yeah, it is the, the T-Rex version, they call it, because these hands were used on the 36 mil previously. So they were still trying to work out the kinks in a few places. And uh, most would say that they they made the, the next generation a lot more, you know, um, utilita utilitarian focus, a lot more balanced. They nailed all those proportions there. Beautiful photo, by the way. Uh, great to see some greenery in the background and you can appreciate all the reflections and the polish, which is nice. There's something cool about an explorer that really just, you know, experiences what it should be getting. Wear and tear, use and abuse. That's the way it is. Yeah, it's awesome. Great shots. We've featured how many explorers already? <laughs> it's great. Uh, like the solid Irex. Yeah, they are fun. You know, they, um, they definitely dress up the watch a lot more. Uh, yeah, but G. Roberts mentioning so happy with the re-release. You know what? That, to me, that's the one Rolex that speaks to me the most, that I'm most interested in, in their catalog. For all the critiquing I gave it in that, that video that I did, um, the 36 is is such an ideal size for the watch. It's not a size for everyone. I don't think it should be considered a daily wearer. For us in the community, it's such a great supplementary piece, something that you wear on a weekend, say, special occasion. <clears throat> oh, dear. The voice is going with the fisherman's friend in, as I was trying to say, special occasion watch. Let's hit some water and see if that makes a difference. Hmm. You know what? talking incessantly for hours i don't recommend it to anyone don't do it next up francois eglantine thank you for watching thank you for sending these in uh it's always a pleasure featuring watches that's the joy of these shows next we're jumping to a vacheron overseas frank just picked this up i believe and in his email <laughs> photo is in the box yeah um so so frank mentioned that there must be a collaboration between Vacheron and um, F.P. Jean because of the way the dials have been done. The dials look very, very similar. And i uh, got to say, it's a, it's a charmer. I find it fascinating how the demand... I mean, I did a video like a year and a half ago about why you should pay more attention to the overseas. Did a full history on the 222 and that whole development of the line. And now you can't find these things anywhere. They're, they're just gone. Uh, Chrono Cray is asking, what is your favorite color tone of Tropic Patinaed Black Dial? Brown, gray, blue. What's my favorite color tone of a Tropic Patinaed Black Dial? Hmm. I'm, I'm a real fan of a Black Dial. There's something just so useful about the color that you can, you can mix up color. I, I much prefer modifying the watch by changing out the straps to complement the dial instead of the other way around. It's a bit polarizing when you get a watch like this with a blue dial. And now all of a sudden, you can't really go anywhere too adventurous when it comes to straps. You know, you kind of have to ride a line that's a bit safer. Where if you have a black dial, you, you have freedom to go. Yeah, you have a freedom to go anywhere. Leather straps, nylon, the full range. Um, rumor. Has, so that's a turbo. So this might actually be the truth. Frank mentioned this in the email. Rumor has it that it's the same dial manufacturer as the chronometer blue. Very interesting, eh? But again, not a watch for everyone. Very, uh, as we say, Vatican. <laughs> Love it. Freddie Turner. Tim Mosso hinted that the same dial maker. Okay, this is good. Six months, not bad. Yeah, so I mean, that is that to do with waiting lists and stuff? Um, the Pigs and Blankets says, wore the 36 Explorer for 15 years daily. I mean, that's amazing. That really is amazing. Um, yeah, I hope, I really hope to get some hands-on time with it because that's the one that's speaking to me now. The 39 was a little bit funky. I think the going back to the 36 will be something to experience. I just find it so perplexing that it wasn't Tudor that brought the 36s out, you know? Vacheron has stopped taking deposits as of two months ago. I can't believe it. I think Mark P has put his name down for one, so let's all hold our fingers that he's going to get it. It's cool. It is really cool. Um, it's great. We're going to move next to George. Oh, reverso time. Are you ready? Do we want to see the blue face or the white face first? Mm, blue face. George sends in the duo face with a bottle of gin. And 
talk about reversos. And they pulled the cat out of the, is, is that the expression? They pulled the, the rabbit out of the hat. It's not the cat out of the bag. They pulled the rabbit out of the hat with that release. 90th anniversary of the reverso. Did not expect it. I mean, the, the an actual anniversary day came and went um, this year. Uh, and oh, what an amazing watch. Uh, watch Advisor did a great video on it, just looking at all the specs and details. Hell, it's not a watch for everyone. They've only, they're only making like 10 of them, you know? But uh, it's it's something to appreciate, especially the, the back of them, seeing the, the moon phases. And you can quite literally determine when the next supermoon is, when the next eclipse is going to be, what the moon looks like on the northern side or the southern hemisphere, regardless. There, there is so much to take in on that piece. Uh, it's, it's not, put it this way, it's not, in my case, I don't find it aesthetically appealing. It's a little bit too silver. <laughs> can you say that? Uh, everything's very flat. But then just the complications inside it. You've got a tourbillon, minute repeater, perpetual calendar, and then all the moon phases. It's, it's, it's nuts. But then the Reverso Duo Face, this example here is absolute gem. One of the best. And the beauty is that you turn it around, oh, and you've got Gillesche, and you've got everything that you would want in one package. I think the white dial just sings in this. Look at the balance there and everything. Awesome shot too, George. I like these these alcohol bottles with the watches. It does add some some context there. Um, yeah, Russell, there we go. Rabbit out of the cat. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, that's like that's like so politically incorrect. You know, uh, it's great. If you order a black, so Megan says, if you order a black dial VC, I bet you'll get the watch within a week. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the blue dials are the ones that everyone wants, but the black dial is so much more versatile. That would be the one I'd be going for, given the chance. Uh, it's more tuxedo. It's more just casual, everyday wearing. Um, I mean, you talk about value for money. You're getting horterology. You're getting all those strap options in one package. Um, Touristers, once you go black in dials, you never go back. I mean, all I own at the moment are black dial watches. They, at least in my case, I, I much prefer accessorizing with straps and not really worrying about the color of the dial, changing the, the appearance of the watch too much. Um, it's good. Love the Reverso, classic. This one especially, the Duo Face with the blue dial. This is very in demand, I think. One of the most popular in this range. Uh, it's awesome. Box JLC Reverso novels. Yeah, that is right, James Conn. Um, that was like a, that was a great video. Watch Advisor covered it for like 30 minutes. Okay, this is the same George, I believe. I believe, I hope. Rock climbing with a Seiko Prospects. I think this is the same guy. I'm pretty sure it is because we have featured this before. And don't you love how, talking about wearing watches, we love, we go from something like this to just a simple everyday wearing Seiko. I believe this is the Samurai Monster. The Monster Samurai, I'm going to call it. Um, we featured some great shots of his in the past with like excellent lighting. I think the NATO just pips it with this piece too. Um, so the VC has to be the coolest seal sports watch on the market. The fact that they include rubber and leather. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's just customer appreciation, Matthew. Another thing is just I think the way that the authorized dealers would treat you at Vacheron would be so different to other of these, these higherology brands. I mean, you go to Patek, for example, I don't think you would get the same. Just I wouldn't say the level of treatment would be even, but I think Vacheron would be a lot more accommodating if, if that makes any sense. It's just great. I, th I think the what they offer you in that package, you pretty much get a one watch. The idea of a rubber strap, I mean, you get a deployant as well. So you don't only get a full metal bracelet deployant, you get a deployant clasp with rubber, with leather. Um, yeah, black dial for me, Gen 3. What a dream. Awesome, awesome watch. Um, small seconds tribute. I don't know what's going on. Chatting, chatting about 911s again. <laughs> My happy color, Megan says. Yeah, I mean, oh, what a cool shot. This especially, this yellow, this goes beyond jaundice yellow. You know, now we're talking, what, like sunflower yellow. You know, it's, it's much brighter, much more in your face. And this this is the way to do it. You know, bypassing. You want to bypass jaundice as much as possible if you can. Good question, Neferion. What are those buttons for? I have less idea than a goat. Maybe someone can help me. I thought they had to do with adjusting day dates, or but I have no idea. They're on all the corners. Maybe they're bumpers, something to protect the watch if you if you smack it against something. I really, really don't know. 
got Eric Bell quoting more musicians in the in the chat. Um, <laughs> Michael says, uh, I'd pair this nicely with a yellow bug. Oh, yeah, I love my Beatles. There's just a, there's something so cool about them, so eternal, you know. That's I, I love the f- design-wise, you know, talking about the history. There's something just so ergonomic about them, the fact that they have just been everywhere. They're one of the icons of the ages and such cool cars to modify too. So easy. Sunflower. <laughs> CW, sunflower yellow. You know all the colors, every single one, the whole spectrum. Don't even want to get me started, you know. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, so it's Turbo says, the Vacheron customer treatment is outstanding. They're such a nice brand to interact with. You know, if I had the chance of choosing one Vacheron right now, it would be the 1921. And I'd have to try and ask them to arrange the dial in the in the other fashion where it's for a right-handed wrist. Uh, sorry, right, a left-handed wrist on the right side. Doxa Carbon, yes, for sure, Megan. I mean, this is, this is the right kind of color, right? This matches Doxa. Speaking of Doxa, we have a really cool piece to share from Thomas later on. Okay, I've got to keep motoring. Um, Karina says, I, I would love a JLC Reverso tribute to Small Second. Wouldn't we all? I would love the tribute to 31. I, I What a cool watch. Ultra Slim. Okay, so George, thank you for these. Jumping to Graham next, another, another uh, Tudor Black Bay. And he says, statement watch with a statement shirt. Now we really are talking Hendrixian shirts going there. How's that? (laughs) So cool. I feel like this is something that Eric Bell would love to rock. Eric does have a psychedelic side to him, I believe. Um, It's good. That yellow dial would frighten mosquitoes. (sighs) Don't get me started with mosquitoes. Coming out of Africa. God. When you think of the amount of hours you spend in your life killing mosquitoes, any I mean, any of that on that plane, you know, if you're living in the on the equator, good lord. <laughs> I hate mosquitoes. Uh, taking a hit from the whiskey again. Yeah, Megan, VC 1921. That that would be for me. It's such a beautiful thing. It's it just captivates the time period so well. It's an outlier. No one would know the watch. No one could even recognize it unless you're an enthusiast. And it's just beautiful. So subtle. New saying I'll use tomorrow. (laughs) That's from Russell. Um, New saying I will use tomorrow with the wife when she asks me something. I have less idea than a goat. Yeah, that's an expression that I got from my dad, actually. He uh, he has the... When I was a kid, I got put in the principal's office uh, for saying the most ridiculous one-liners and um, got it all from my dad. You know, I would say something like when the teacher was was crapping me out in front of the class, like in front of her, in front of the class, I'd be standing there. I would then say after she'd had her spiel, I would say something like, so what's your point? You know, and for a, a six-year-old to say that to a teacher, I would have had the, I would have all, all levels of uh, beaten out of me, would you say? Probably producer Michael. I mean, this is the kind of thing he would rock, right, Touristas? I love it. Okay, jump in next. Graham, I love it. I like the color pairing. I mean, rocket. That's what it's about. The importance of wearing clothes you love. There's the theme right there. Jumping to Greg next. And, oh, here we go. This is a classic Seamaster. I love the fact that many times we feature Seamasters of this era, whether the 60s, whether this is like late 60s, early 70s, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the classic Omega logo, you have the pencil hands, The uh, it's it's cool. Classic Seamaster text, day-date complication, bracelet, very integrated. I feel like this is early 1970s, you know. Um, flashback shirt. You should paint your house while wearing a Tudor. I mean, that's that's it. That pretty much sums it up. Very much a, um, what's that artist's name with the way he does his painting? Jackson Pollock. This is a very Jackson Pollock style shirt. Maybe that was the the vibe. Look at that bracelet, isn't that cool? So yeah, my famous one-liner was, so what's your point? And then the best one that really got me in deep was, uh, this is when she reprimanded the entire class. I loved the teacher, by the way. So I don't know what I was, I don't know what I was saying at that age, but I said something like, I'm, I wonder what the Child Protection Agency would have to say about that one. A six-year-old saying that. Was, I was younger. Yeah, I was about six, six or seven. And uh, that's what got the parents in. And there was some serious repercussions, put it that way. Love it. Gotta love it. 
Pollock was a typo. <laughs> um, so Luke Venter says, I've always wanted a Stingray vet. Yeah, in pewter, same color as the Shelby Stang. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, I would, yeah, I would choose the Stingray over, I mean, as much as the uh, the Eleanor Shelby Mustang is nice, there's there's something about the the, the, co the, um, the original Stingray. It's just a beauty. Omega is king. We love it. We love these bracelets. We love the charm. A real character trait. This remind. I mean, this looks like it was pulled exactly from the AP line. They just decided instead to keep it all integrated, you know, and not have articulating elements to it. Yeah, it's a gem. A watch of its time. Greg, thanks for sending this in. We've got a. <laughs> that's exactly it, Justin. Um, the nuns at Catholic schools would have crushed you. Luckily, I didn't go to uh, Catholic schools. That would have been the end of me. I mean, I would have been castrated, hung, who knows. Uh, to John next. Thank you for this. We're hopping over to, this is really cool. Um, it's called a Galet Galco Close. That's what I titled it, Galet Galco. It's a skin diver from back in the day. And I think he just picked this watch up. This gives you vibes of the, the RS-65. We're actually going to be having a look at one in a second, just in a, in a few slides. Quarter Arabics, you've got all those little sharp elements there. You've got this integrated bezel. How cool is this piece? I love it. I do love it. Uh, Catholic nuns would have crushed me. Oh, they would have ended me. Uh, so Bud just says, you're right. I can go to church, come back, watch the rest of the show. So that's just what you did, right? Yeah, but I mean, go make a meal, uh, you know, enjoy some sun out there for a while. Maybe go for a swim and we'll still be going. Um, Megan mentioning strap as dust. You know what? I have experienced this firsthand and can totally agree with you, Megan. These, the one downside of, of these silicone rubber straps, as you can see in this example, they do like to get mucked up fast. So you have to constantly keep them wet. It's, it's a pretty good motivator to make sure that these things see water. Uh, but a classic little Galco skin diver, it's a gem. It's a real gem. And the best part of all is that when you see the crystals, I mean, this has RS-65 written all over it, you know, the, the full PVD bezel inserts. Uh, it's, it's just great. Really is nice. John, we love these quirky little pieces. It looks exactly like an RS Samurai. I mean, that's it. Zodiac Super Seawolf. There we go. Another example. And we see just how these aesthetics have gone through time. In fact, this looks exactly like a, uh, a bathyscaphe a ba bath from, um, from the 60s. Pretty sure they had an arrangement just like this, or an aqualung, those those bathyscaphe aqualungs with these these triangle quarters uh, segments. Looks good. Californication would have a nun system <laughs> ripping off an alpha. No, it'd be much worse than that, Megan. I think it would get very gratuitous to say the least. Uh, yeah. What's the difference between a melon and a matta boob? I have no idea, Hans. That sounds like a very peculiar joke. So I don't know if this is the same John, but this is a John. Maybe it is, but he shared an RS-65 with us next. And I love this watch. I've actually seen these all over um, on secondhand pages. I think these look great. I mean, this is the 65, just without the bezel, basically. And you got this for a steal. <laughs> there we go. He actually gave me the price. Bought for 19 pounds. How's that? 19 pounds. That's where the, that's where you can see, that's where the demand is for these watches. Uh, look at those quarter Arabics. I've been wearing this like the most lately. It's uh, it's awesome. Now we've got Yogi Bear going on there and uh, those long, long skinny lugs. Those those longs are long and skinny. <laughs> those lugs we're talking about, right? Iso isoframe strap so much better than Thomas. I need to experience an isoframe strap. We're gonna be we're gonna be featuring that in a second. Actually, we're gonna get to T eventually. We're still on J, and we've been running now for two and a half hours. How many more? We're actually doing very good. Who would thunk? This guy has been talking absolute nonsense for the last two and a half hours, and it's it's been going pretty fast. Great. Um, yeah, got to love an R65. It's one of my favorites in this category. Uh, it's just so much fun. Watches need to be fun. That's actually getting back to the theme of the video, of the show. Um, buying things that you love. In my case, watches need to be fun. They need to have something about them that aren't serious. There's so many serious latex boy thanks for that megan uh there's so many serious things surrounding the world that we're in you know seriousness is everywhere it's nice to see watches that break the barriers a little bit and do have those quirks and elements that make them more charming more like characters 
you have a reverso. Daniel, I wish I had a reverso. Uh, the 1931 would be my poison, given the chance. But no, I don't. I feel like it's going to be one on the cards one of these days, though. Um, first, I need to get a Rolex before my 30th or around that time, <laughs> I hope. Uh, great. John, of all the watches you've sent in, this 65 dial is my favorite. Why so serious, Neferion? You're right. You're right. Okay. Jumping to Chrono Craze next, and we are going to enjoy a prospects that some of us recognize. Here we go. This is the, now the, I think this is the Japanese specification being the SBDC 105. I can never get this right, but it's the SPB 145 or 147, something like that. Pete from Knox, does he really, Megan? So Pete from Not So Obvious Watches has an original 65. I've seen a few of them for sale and they look so good. You know, like 36 mils with a little date in the corner. It's, it's so cool. Just fun, pure fun. Skin divers. I mean, here's an example of, this is actually a great segue, talking about the Black Bay 58 that we featured a couple of times already. Here's an example of the modern take on a classic skin diver. And I think that's why this watch is still in my, my collection. I have been hot and cold with this watch, actually. I've got the, um, the 143. We're going to have, we're going to feature it later on in the show. Um, but there's just something about the, the whole idea that they're taking this modern approach in a way competing with the Black Bay 58, doing an excellent job. I mean, you have such a great workhorse in front of you here. This model has a cappuccino dial. So it's cappuccino sunburst with a gilt effect to it too. It's very charming. Talking about bezels, I see uh, Eldon says, no, hold on, who was it? Uh, the pigs in blankets. This one looks lined up. He's referring to the bezel. As we know, QC with bezel inserts are a bit of a problem and we can lose a bit of spacing there. Uh, but it's a nice piece. I mean, and the best part is that Chrono Craze, he has a channel, by the way. <laughs> Wilson asking how much Glenn Morangi is left. Uh, quite a bit, actually. I did add a few, cu one, two cubes of ice. So it has diluted it a bit, which is a problem. But uh, there's enough. There's enough to last the rest of the show. 6-2 MAS style. Yes, that's it. And uh, check these shots. He takes beautiful shots. So Chrono Craze has a channel. I'm going to put it in the chat for everyone here to look up. Okay. And I think it's KH, right? I think that's right. Check out his channel because he has this, this segment called Watch You Strap In. And that's like a, a daily thing where he shares a few minutes of the watches that he's wearing. Really great insights. And photography is also stunning. I mean, it's it's fun. He's shared some amazing stuff with us here. Um, with intolerances, Eric says. That's funny. Chatting again about um, the bezel inserts. Uh, good enough, Seiko. <laughs> uh, it's great to have you here, Wilson, by the way. I missed you earlier on. Um, it's And for the rest of you who've joined, I haven't even said welcome to half the new people who've joined us. Um, hope you're enjoying sitting back and, and shooting the breeze with all of us. How cool does this look? That's the one thing I'll definitely say about these models is that on straps, there's so many options, way too many options out there. Speaking of which, we are going to um, check out another Seiko in a second, and it's the Birch Dial Grand Seiko. <laughs> Guilt Dial. I like how um, Siri worked out that, Megan. They didn't put the, the right, uh, she didn't put in the right description of it. You know, you feel guilty about the dial. It's the way. But we we all appreciate them, right? It's just it's that contrasting color, it's the character it has, and also I think it has matching uh, numeral color on the bezel, which is cool. I like these circles; they're fun. They're lots of fun. I can definitely say, as much as I've been falling in and out of love with mine, as far as a daily wearer, a beater for for s around a thousand bucks in the Prospects line, you're getting an excellent movement. You're getting all the you know more attention to detail. That's the thing to take home. I found a marine master clasp for mine. So it's got a full deployment. It's a titanium clasp. Really cool. But let's have a look at the white birch. We've chatted about this watch. I need to review my one again. We're going to get another one in a second, though. Here is the SLGH005. I really think that the, the, um, the snowflake should move. Is it the snowflake? Is that what they call it? I can't remember. Grand Seiko snowflake. That's it. Um, that should move aside. This one, it's so nice. That texture, how they do it, I don't know. They have some wizards in their factory. Very charming, right? Um, 
And if you know anything about the grain that you deal with when you're working with birch as a material, this is the kind of stuff you see. And there's just no clutter on the dial. I've, again, I've said this hundreds of times, but the um, if given the chance to modify this watch, if I could get in there and s just streamline it a little bit, get rid of the double batons at the 12, enlarge the GS, put it there, get rid of Grand Seiko on the dial. It might open up the watch a bit too much. It might look a little bit vacant here in the front, but I think it would streamline it a bit more. And who wants Grand Seiko underneath the title of the watch? I mean, GS is well better than good enough. You don't need people to know that you're wearing Grand Seiko. You know what I mean? This is, I mean, this, the Grand Seiko line should be something that is just its own thing. Something that rides under the radar that no one knows unless you know. If you're in the club, you get it. <laughs> uh, Aiden's saying, I'm getting one of these. Thanks for the show. It's a pleasure, Flieger. Um, we've had a good time the last two hours, two and a half hours, two hours, 35. But the best part is we have a movement to check out in a second too. So uh, I just think the shot is also, and the bottom text, um, Michael mentioned to get rid of the bottom text. Yeah, I mean, what is the point of, of the spec? High beat 36,080 36, hours. <sighs> Couldn't they just, what would you add instead? That's the question. What would be what would be the elements that you would add? Maybe something like Zeratsu polish or superlative, uh, I don't know, super, superficially certified, that kind of thing. I don't know. When it comes to putting text on dials, done a video about that in the past and how as it's gone further and further up, so it's getting more and more confusing. <laughs> uh, note date window. I mean, that's it. We could just reduce this watch down to nothing. And the question is, I mean, you know what? Thinking about it, if you had to reduce this watch down to its bare essentials, the birch being the star of the watch itself, I think it would work a lot better. The GS title at the 12, no Grand Seiko, no text on the dial, get rid of the date window. Then you have something that is really representative of that dressy nature. Another thing about these is that they've gone crazy with the lugs. There's like eight facets to every lug they've got so many little cuts they've done within the the polishing here and it's ridiculous but then of course we have the new movement oh this looks great i mean i'll i'll be honest the the past seiko grand seiko movements have never really done much for me they've never stood out you know i think it's that that balance i think it's the um the rotor that does it it's very ap vacheron you know very high horology looking look at that bridge that they're doing across the balance there Oh my goodness. So this is the caliber 9SA5. 36,000 beat rate and high beat, of course. Oh, it's good. 80 hour power reserve. This really looks good. Hey, I really like it. Okay, I'm out bird watching. Okay, what is going single malt with ice? I know, Mooseman, the only reason why I did it is just so that it lasts longer. Problem is, with single malt, it just disappears. Uh, I have to try and dilute it a bit just so it lasts while I'm chatting for God knows how long. Nothing would be just right. Yeah, I mean, th that's, you know, my talk around the whole text on dial di di dilemma debate is that um, brands need to try and bring across that you're buying something of a luxury quality. And a lot of the time, without text on dials, it doesn't look luxury. Grand Psycho, exactly, Touristas. So adding all of this extra stuff gives you the impression that you're buying something that more attention has been put into. I think that's the theory. But I mean, you look at some models like the, the modern Daytona. Sorry, Daytona lovers, but that amount of text on the watch, it's so unnecessary. In a way, it balances it out, but it's, it's also just heavy. It can be very heavy. Um, look at that movement, though. I'm really impressed. This is the first time I've actually seen this up close. I think that that rotor is what really does it for me. The rotor and the way the bridges have been done. This looks like horse horology. You would swear. And now guys are chatting about skinheads in the chat. I don't know what is what is going on, but uh, yeah, it's all good. All all good. Rastafarians. Oh my goodness. Pelagos. Less is more. Doctor J says. I mean, tail as old as time. Um, Mark, thank you. I don't know if this is the same Mark. This might be a different one. But we have a series of some very different watches to what we normally see. Uh, an Oris Pro Diver Titanium. Oris have some amazing deep sea divers. I think they've got a depth gauge model that's 
been infinitely fascinating. I've, I've looked at in the past. Um, what time did Sean Connery watch Wimbledon? Is this a joke, Eric? I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be something like something like half past ten, or I don't know. Uh, less is more. The whole the issue with less is more. What did I say in that Rolex video? If less is more, then nothing must be even greater. <laughs> uh, where does this guy come up with this stuff? Um, right. 10, Ten ish. There we go. I knew I was, I was close, Eric. I was really close. Um, okay. Hitting the whiskey again. The dregs. Great watch, the RS Pro Driver. Looks good, right? Thanks, Megan. Um, and titanium is on a rubber strap. Great size. I would imagine it's like 44, 45 mils. A thousand meter water resistance. Another brand. I mean, I was chatting about Longines earlier, but Oris has, Oris has all the all the elements um, when it comes to being a, just a proficient watch. I think that's why there's been so much appeal for these pieces and the voice is going, as you can hear. <clears throat> so, Fisherman's Friend, round three. I wonder why the voice is struggling so much today. Must be something in the air. That was a good line. Fair um, There's another good one. Um, I used to I used to know a very good line with with uh, Sean Connery, but I lost it. I forgot it. But he had that you know the way he spoke. It's classic. So same same as Longines. Oris is very under the radar, very underrated, worth looking into just for the fact that you can get such a, a lot of watch for the money. This is getting further ahead of the micro brand space, but you're still getting a watch that is well made. Uh, you know. Good fun to wear. Watches are fun. The Zen UX, the ferry on those are just absolute, absolutely amazing. Oil filled, right? Oil filled quartz, five thousand meters, <laughs> and it's it's such an such a simple looking piece, which is even better. Vostok version of Oris is known as Boris. <laughs> Raymond, that's one of the best comments of the show by far. But we're not done yet. Mark has sent in something else, and it's a Railmaster denim. This one, this one is a love it or hate it thing. It perfectly lines up. We are almost three hours into the show, and now it lines up perfectly with the theme of the importance of wearing watches you love. I would say 90% of people seeing this watch would find it similar to the Air King from, from Rolex, Rolex's side. Very bizarre watch in many, many ways. This was their way of, you know, I, I look at this and I think they've taken lots of the modern elements from the Aquaterra line, and fitted it with the rail master dial arrangement, the, the quarter Arabics and everything there. It's actually got pole router dividing lines across it, which is nice. But then you have this texture on the dial, which is basically everything about this piece is polarizing. Um, and talking about denim straps and everything else there too. I mean, you know, it's it's a very peculiar watch, but then it's a talking point. It's a lot of fun. It's got a bit of modern. It's got a bit of vintage. We were chatting about just that whole... Air King line is, is another shot, I think, with some Levi's jeans, just to check it out in uh, the tension there. My favorite pair of Levi's jeans are 501s. I actually can check how many. I think <clears throat> I think I have about five pairs of 501s, all different colors. It's the way to do it. I much prefer, what do you guys prefer, buttons or zippers? Buttons over zippers. Um, I think most guys can probably say that they've had bad experiences with zippers in the past and uh, I can definitely agree with that. So buttons are my um, my go-to, a lot safer for that way. Um, gorgeous, it's cool, unexpected. Yeah, I mean, it's not a new watch either. They've, they've brought it out a long time ago. And again, another fun-loving, fun-wearing piece. I also enjoy that they didn't patina the elements on the, on the dial. I do enjoy that it's white and not uh, khaki in color. So Mark enjoys buttons. This is fun. Chatting about cars at one stage, and now Megan says both. I mean, being a lady, you're lucky, Megan. You can you can accessorize. Uh, this is fun. Uh, Eric says my old UX loom was eroded by fluorinert. Fl fluorinert. Fluor I ain't no chemist. I won't be able to tell you what that is. Cool looking piece. A lot of fun. You know, rail masters. They they uh, deserve some love. I mean, they are the originals. They don't get the certain, anywhere near the same amount of attention as the the Seamasters and the um, the Speedies do. But I think Omega could really kick it out of the park with kick it out of the park. That's something. Knock it out of the park with uh, with the Railmaster line if they had to go back into that DNA. Um, we could say very much that the Aquaterra 
is the the now modern rail master okay going to hop next to martin this is great i'm pretty sure martin was on the show i don't know if it's the same i'm pretty sure it was but you notice the birth of his son in the background and he is rocking a, uh, a beautiful what do i call it the great white the great white sea master okay this should be fun let's see what's going on in the chat we've got ouch we've got um i like velcro velcro is not bad <laughs> Uh, who was the guy that took his off at the laundry? Yeah. Um, but a waste of time having to redo belts and shirts tucked in with a button fly. Uh -huh. Ouch. No quartz watches yet, which only got me thinking. How about a show featuring quality quartz, not the run-of-the-mill low-quality stuff? I'll tell you why I don't do shows based around a theme in a moment. Um, surely you all have Velcro. Velcro? I can't imagine. Vel Found a zip... <laughs> Fun, fun for <laughs> fun for zipper jeans. No, you know what, Turbo? It's more like some kind of titanium belt that goes around the nether regions. It's probably a better call than than a zipper. I mean, you can buy the jeans fine, but it's just protecting the the male unit. That's better. Uh, stop calling me Shirley. Yeah, yeah. Shirley, you can't be serious. I love airplanes. One of my favorites. Okay, so here's the story. His son was born. I'm pretty sure Martin was watching the, the damn show while his wife was in labor that day. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. And that was, a, that was an intense time, especially for me as a host. I'm listening to all of this, thinking to myself, you know, we've got contractions going on. We've got water breaking. It's, it's a complete shit show. And he's watching the show like he's got his feet up, just enjoying himself while his wife is going through trauma. I think this is the same guy. And uh, he did say that he is going to be adding a reverso to celebrate the birth of his son which is just superb i think and another thing is that this watch is pretty much ingrained into that uh story now too even if you want to sell the watch one day it's going to be there it was there for the birth of your son and that is just just great run a saw run a saw for five minutes and come back to this conversation yeah we're talking about pigs and blankets now i mean that works pretty <laughs> see pigs and blankets that's pretty appropriate right um flashback i love the white velcro busted chairs voice going man's falling <laughs> oh justin the man's falling apart you know what i most certainly am awesome story great watch um yeah we're talking about this this piece i mean the professional is a love it or hate it thing of all this is one of my favorites i i do really like the the panda aesthetic but i understand i mean there are lots of dividing elements to this piece i i do address it a little bit in a in the video that's coming out next week with chrono 24 uh skeletonized hands the aspects that we address all the time but it is it is good to see that this watch is getting a lot of love this is not the only professional we will see one in a moment too but martin thank you uh so he's in hospital big building with patients but that's not important right now <laughs> yeah am i right it's pretty cool it's pretty cool i like the story Martin, I think you were the guy in the background watching the show while your wife was going through all sorts. And I was and I was trying to say to you, just attend to your wife. What are you doing? It was good fun. Uh, we always just have a have a good laugh doing these shows. Uh, he has misaligned. Talking about the misaligned bezel. Ah, oh, he missed it by one click. Megan, I know Megan loves these, so I'm going to be sure to get it right in so she can enjoy that. So next up, Martin, thank you for this. Congratulations. I really hope you find an amazing reverso to celebrate the moment. It's it's a journey. Life is a journey. It's not about the destination. Yeah, getting really deep. Jumping to Matthews. Now, now we can really talk about something that was brand spanking new and has just arrived and has grabbed a lot of our attention. And it is the uh, Hermes H08. I think that's the reference they're calling it. This watch is, okay, I think we should have a OCD overload, yeah, for sure. I think we should have a commentary in the chat, Y or N, yes or no. What do you think of this watch? Just for the moment, don't think about the price. Just comment on the watch itself, the aesthetic and all of that there. What do you reckon? I'm going to start the uh, the trend, Y or N, what do you think? And I'll, I've, I've been having a think about this piece a bit, sitting back and having a look at it and just coming to terms with, underrated yeah raymond i would agree it's almost like a unanimous why this <laughs> eric no mate <laughs> uh it's good this is fun uh, so we had this we had the hulk vote earlier on and it was a unanimous no almost uh and now we have 
a huge majority very interesting um have you seen a grown man naked wasn't that wasn't that also airplane line God, i can't remember so let's uh i love how we go back and forth in the chat ymca nefarion it's fun to stay at that place so what i liked about it when i when i sat back and really had a look and looked at the video done by um my watch advisor the best thing about this watch is the deployment by the way have a look at the <laughs> <Z> fonts are great <laughs> the pigs and blankets says the fonts are great yeah, it's good to know um I, I watched the watch advisor video and the one thing that blew me away was the deployment class this is fitted with i think it's a 38 mil ish watch male unit protector fund turbo thank you now that is much more practical you're thinking now <laughs> Thank you. It's like it's like the case around your it's the anodized case around your uh, your speedmaster there. It's the same kind of thing, you know. It's good to have a male protector unit. That's good. So what I when I sat back and had a look, I thought to myself, this this piece feels very industrial designed, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I heard that Hermes runs fast. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Greek. That's right. It's Greek tradition. Um, so. Yeah, that, that's really it. I feel this is very industrial designed in the way the case has been done. It's got lots of 70s influence to it, but the beauty is that I'm, I'm sure most of us know this by now. Uh, I think Megan mentioned it in the chat. I think there was a talk with Bill Sanders about it at one stage that there is someone in-house who actually comes up with the fonts for these watches, and they have their own custom font that they've done for this piece. And Neo, if he's watching the show, don't ask Neo. <laughs> it's just about to say, Mark. If Neo is watching this show, I think he mentioned that he hates the four, he hates the eight and the nine. It's a miss. Someone else commented that they hate where the date is placed. I will, I will, okay, I will say that I love the four. The eight, mm, eight's a little bit, a little bit weird. I think what they could have done to improve the font on this, look at this guy sitting, sitting in the armchair talking about improving designs. Um, elongate the text a little bit more because this watch is very square. If the, if the text was less square and more rectangular, if you know what I mean, uh, it's it would add a bit more of a dynamic. But I just what I love about the way Hermes does their watches is there's this rotational element to the to the numerals around the dial. It's got a very field watch feel to it. Also, see where the second hand is in the center of the dial there, so it runs around the minute track inside there. Interesting. And then you have the TV case and uh, all the styling from back then. And the movement is approved by Bill Sanders, so that is huge. You know, when when I heard that, Megan, I was thinking to myself, "Wow, this must mean." You know, before mentioning that he approved it, I thought, "Wow, he's going to tear this watch to pieces." So, uh, yeah, I like that. I like the idea that there's someone in house who designs the the numerals, and then things like they've actually tried to make a stitch to the rubber. <laughs> That's actually rubber that looks like it's formed to be a stitch. Again, the deployment is amazing on this because it's actually got a, a micro-adjust system within it. So you're not only getting a watch that is uh, fully adjustable with, with holes on a, on a strap, but you also have a, a micro-adjust deployment too, which is kind of unnecessary, but it's good to reach for the stars sometimes. You know. Model name, Eldon. It's the H08. I'll put it in the chats. Um, as I think that's how you spell it. Jeez, like, I don't know. You must remember that I'm starting to see double after three hours of talking to myself. Uh, Hermes H08. <laughs> Hermes not herpes. Exactly, Raymond. That's just it. Yeah. Funny enough, you know, the herpes virus is more common than you think. There's so many variants of it out there. Um, can I say virus or that also get me banned on this platform? I don't know. Anyway, carrying on to Max next. Thank you, Ms. Mat Matthews. I'll call you Matt. I love the colors. There's so many cool little things about this that I like. It was mentioned in the chat about um, aging and how this watch will age over time and what is it going to be like in a couple of years. I think there's this very, I mean, you look at the Patek Nautilus and those examples, there's a very popular resurgence of 70s motifs that I think will stand the test of time. You must remember that this falls into the category of a fashion watch. When I say fashion, I don't mean the Daniel Wellington. I'm talking... High fashion, kind of like in that that Octo Finissimo space, where it's a bit out there, a bit fun. This feels a lot more utilitarian, which is goes a bit against what Hermes is about. They normally are pretty playful with what they do with their leather and their their accessories. So it should be good. I look forward to hearing the opinions and the feedback on this piece. And again, watches need to be fun, 
This is the kind of thing that you should be looking at. And straight after Martin with his Seamaster, we jump to Max with his Seamaster. I don't know where he is. I think he, oh wait, he did mention. The thing is, a lot of these emails I can't even read. I just save the images eventually, but I think he was based in the States. And we have the Seamaster on rubber. Get to enjoy the dial in a different lighting scenario, which is cool. And let's get back in the chat. I'm missing you all here. Megan says, definitely adding an H8 to my collection. Yeah, I mean, it's love the simplicity. And it feels like another field watch. I don't think we can ever pass on a field watch, Megan. Regardless, uh, they all have their own little charm and character. Uh, Loch Ness? Really? No. Come on, Eric. No, this is definitely, it can't be in Loch Ness. It's too sunny to be Scotland. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Eric, maybe if, if you, I mean, you know your, your way around Scotland there. Um, and another point, Megan says, I can't wait for the first person to assume it's an Apple Watch to tell them it's an Hermes H. Yeah, I mean, that's, talk about, and that was something else, industrial design. That's another thing that, that rang true when I looked at it is it feels very much like, you know, that same zone. And the thing is, you could, you'll probably be able to get Apple Watch faces that resemble this too. So if you are going to pass on the physical watch, I'm pretty sure you'll find a Hermes collaboration with Apple soon with, with this layout. They've probably done it already. <laughs> Who knows? Um, fashion turn to the left. Fashion turn to the right. Yep. Um, Mason says the, that H08 has some nice subtleties not apparent from the head-on photo. Talking about the case flanks and everything there. Should be good. I look forward to seeing how it develops over time. Yeah. Vogue. What's going on? Looks like California. Looks like Central Park, New York City. I love you guys. I love you guys. You know, you know how confusing it is when I'm trying to be straight and to the point and then I, I read stuff like this that just completely throws me for a loop i love it i love it seamaster professional ceramic bezel ceramic dial awesome movement rock star watch at this stage everyone loves them yeah i'm i'm seamastered out actually i've done a big write-up on them and uh, all about the legendary 165 the the, the mod seamaster that i hope omega brings out soon anyway moving on next max thanks for this uh, NYC, Central New York City, uh, looks a bit arid. Don't know what happened. Anyway, moving on to Matthew, and this this is an outlier. I've seen lots of adverts for Christopher Ward in the UK uh, on TV and stuff. I think he sent another shot. Looks like he's paddleboarding out there. Hold on a sec. Is this Matthew four one seven? I think it might be. Uh, I don't know if he's still with us in the chat. If 417 is your username, <laughs> sorry sorry if I, I botched it there. Um, so uh, Brew Watch, I mean, that's it, Dan. Wow, Dan nailed it, Brew Watch. Um, Lake District or East Coast US, Eric is guessing. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you guys, you guys are great. Thank you. Um, so this is a Christopher Ward limited edition. Um, I, th I think that's it. I think that's the, I, I don't know what the, what the, it's a CW something or other, right? That's the call sign. It has a, a, I'm enjoying this though. They've done this with a few of their models that they've made their dials transparent. And I haven't been following the brand very much. I don't know if they've gone in-house with their movement manufacturer, but uh, maybe someone can help me out. What I do like here is the use of color. We've got variances of navy. We've also got the light blue, the baby blue of, um, oh, it's a trident. Of course it's a trident. I mean, come on. Don't even need to look at the, <laughs> don't even need to look at the chat. No one's even got it yet. Okay. So good. I'm still on the ball. The alcohol is obviously working. Uh, nice use of baby blue with the navy and the, the transparency to the dial is also great because you can see that date window running around there. I would have preferred if it adopted more of the defy arrangements where it's not actually framed. It just it just appears in that open space. That would have been nice. But really cool looking piece. Christopher Ward Trident's. I again. I think it's a modified ETA. Bezel misaligned. No, I think he. Oh, maybe he was using. No, he's definitely not using the bezel for timing. I have no idea. That's, that's a bad bezel misalignment, though. Imagine that. Imagine it's 60 click, and that's the first. Ooh. Anyway, um, another close-up shot we can enjoy. There we go. We can see the movement. Any movement junkies out there could probably tell us what the caliber is. Probably an ETA 2A24. So, oh, there we go. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the super chat, too, saying some CWs are in-house, others not. Okay. Um, and now we, Hans, I, you guys have the scoreboard going on. I don't know if you're talking about football or if you're talking about like wins and losses. Uh, 
Sam Ray, thank you. I love, I love how you like doing the research in the background. It's amazing. Diameter of 40 millimeter, movement Salita SW200. Okay. Base limited edition of 500. MSRP of a th just over a thousand US dollars. Yeah. I mean, another, you would say that this has gone beyond micro. It's uh, it's macro brand at this point. Megan's just reminded me, hit three hours. Thank you, Megan. I mean, you're like the best. You're, you're, you're the maverick, always going to be the maverick of these shows. Um, that's awesome. It's just hit three hours. I still feel like I'm going strong and surprising. I don't think this will be a four hour show. So that's cool. At least, at least you won't hit the four hour mark, which is a bonus. <laughs> uh sapphire is it a sapphire dial oh that's cool yeah there's there's all shane saying not winning any christopher awards oh oh we're getting really punny today i mean the elements that i find very peculiar is, is the way they've done this with their type and their logo is also bizarre but then again you're buying you're buying a watch in the uk it's it's good to see that these names are starting to get really big similar to bremont i know they also catch a lot of flack but um it's nice to see that these manufacturers are like very integral and they've started to push their brand out more. It's nice to know that you're playing for the home team in many ways. These puns. Yeah, yeah. Okay, moving on next. Thank you for this, Matthew. To oh, this should be fun. There's some in, in the chat who will enjoy this. Uh, he just, uh, Michael, just picked this watch up. And anyone can maybe guess what this watch is. Uh, he says, liking the controversy. That's why he picked it up. So this should be fun. Uh, Michael says, speaking of transparent dials, Bomb and Mercier just brought back the Riviera collection with the Sapphire. Ooh, going to have to look at that. Michael, um, within the next, what, two months, we're going to have a watch report show again. And then there I'm going to cover all the best releases of that segment. I feel like it's going to be a damn long video. I feel like it's going to be six hours at this rate, considering all the releases there uh yeah so this is a 925 silver surfer i like that that's cool <laughs> not a black bay 58 not another one please please god not another one um gotta say the color looks nice this the one of all the releases that i saw this year this, this year this month right this month um the the, the bike compacts pandas and reverse pandas didn't mm, didn't do much for me the gold black bay it's kind of shooting a little bit going a little bit too far i think for, for what the watch is but this though i love the finish and apparently through the specifications they've mentioned that this sterling silver is not going to tarnish which i do look forward to seeing i for anyone out there watching if you're watching this in 10 years time and your uh your sterling silver black bay has tarnished email me at inquire.idguy at gmail.com i'll be very interested in knowing and uh, we'll definitely want to feature it to see what happens. So as far as I know, 925 Sterling loves to tarnish and loves to smell. So it should be good to see. Um, but love the color, though. The, the, the shine of Sterling is unlike steel. I mean, it almost it does look like white gold, which is amazing. It's really, really nice. Would love a silver bracelet option. And I mean, that would just drive the price up, Brent, which is the downside. Unfortunately, um, it's a pity. I think they could have done a bit more than just offer it on a leather strap. They they could have. They, I think they also added a NATO in the, in the configuration. But what else could they have done? I mean, what other options? They could have done something cool with a bracelet that was a lot less sterling. Maybe, maybe uh, the center links, similar to um, two tone, the center links could be sterling and a bit more shinier. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, taupe, yeah. Megan says, love the Riviera. I haven't even seen it. Bomb and Mercier, also on my list. I will definitely have a look at that in the future. Um, I have a mansion, forget the price. Ooh, I know that. That's, um, <sighs> life has been good to me. No, no, what, is the, what is the, I'm going to get this. I'm not going to look at the chat. I'm going to remember this. Oh, come on. I've got, the, I've got the tune in my head now, Eric. You bastard. Thank you for that. Uh, right, carry on. Um, Brasso will do the trick. Who wants to? I mean, think this is what I just don't. I just don't get. It's like, why would you want to put Brasso on your watch? It's like torture. It's like saying, chatting with uh, with JCB at one stage. We're chatting about how you need to file down some elements of the bracelet of your Seamaster because it's too sharp. You spend that much money on a watch. Do you really want to take Brasso to it to, to give it a polish? It's, it's nuts. Come on, I should know the song. Ah, uh, no. 
uh, Joe Joe Walsh. I think that's it. Yeah, Mark, you got it. You got it. Um, Lady Gaga is sponsored by Tudor. I know. So is David Beckham, and he's always caught wearing Rolexes and and anything but. <laughs> you notice on his Instagram page, he's he's flogging Tudors, but then at Wimbledon and events, he's wearing Rolexes. That's pretty funny. Uh, won't Brasso wear the watch down? Yes, it would. It's it's a real. Um, what's the word? I'm not even going to try and. I'm going to try and say the word in the three hour mark. Going to take a hit from the whiskey and move on. I think the the color the color format and the just the dial and everything there has been done very nicely, and the case is also beautiful. Um, yeah, Marky got it. Marky got it. Carrying on to pound the drums next, Michael. Thank you for this. This is the first one of the first sterling silvers I've seen. Uh, actually, and having it featured on the show is a is a real dream so it's it's really awesome um hand slicing action of the watch is a feature yeah so pound the drums next uh so we're having a look at a seiko grenade this reference is the srp05 another in the prospects line and everyone is loving the turtles how can you not i can't believe i didn't what is the name of that song it's still in my it's still in my head i, I can i can i know all the lyrics and i just can't I even know the lick. I even know the tune of the lick and the key and everything, Eric. You're, you're really beating me up here. Abrasive. Chili Prepper, you came in clutch. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, what's it called? What's the what's the Brasso? Brasso is very abrasive. I've got there eventually. <laughs> uh, okay. So we love we love our turtles. Uh, it's it's the original, you know, the 6105, all that story. We chatted about it often. And uh, I've actually really been enjoying looking up Vietnam seikos and the history there it's been fascinating seeing just how much in demand they were back then and how most american gis didn't know seiko as a brand until they got to experience them in places like vietnam and then they brought them back to the states and they just loved them they didn't even know how to pronounce the name but after vietnam they were they were the business and they have this just just an excellent reputation of being workhorses and i think that's where they need to stay you know I'm definitely not singing it, Sam Ray. Not three hours in. Life's been good. Is that really the song, Eric? Is that really the name of it? <sighs> the Turtles. I do love the Turtles. They did some good stuff. <laughs> oh, it's funny. You guys are great. Thank you for thank you for sticking around and listening to me prattle on about whatever. That metal metallurgy is a bit over my head. I admit you, Roberts. Mm. No idea. On saying. Originally the Eagles, then Joe Walsh. Is that so? Really? That's awesome. Thank you for that, Mark. Okay, so pound the drums. Got to love it. Got to love the texture. I also think the way they've done the gilt hand and the gilt divers 200 is also very nice. Uh, the large elongated, the sausage cyclops, we can call it at home. Um, and you either love it or hate it, I think. Also nice texture they put on the crown there. There are many good things to appreciate. It's a prospex. It falls under that line of using the, the six, what was it, the six? So I say sex. The 6R35 movement, whatever. I can never get it right. It's the 6R5 something. Something around there. I've, uh, yeah. Next up is Reed. We know as the Watch Colonel. And he sent in an awesome piece to us all. And funny, we were just chatting about Vietnam era watches. Uh, we have a real classic. And it is a Hamilton from back in the day. I think from around the 80s, if I remember right. This is a real charmer, and he's rocking a, uh, looks like a seatbelt uh, Connery RAF NATO Woolworths, the Woolworths NATO strap, we call it, uh, 6R35. Sam Ray, thank you. You're always there to, to help me out. Thank you. Um, thank God I only learned violin in school, B Dev. Uh, what, was the, what was the comment from B Dev mentioning I used to play a silver plated trumpet? Oh, no, no, don't. Anything, I mean, brass. It's it's terrible. It's like any any of those those any kind of instrument that has that material. It's the worst thing. I've I've become very cautious with my my acoustics because of nitrocellulose, and it's a very thin layer. I've every time I finish playing my Martin, I have to rub it down with a um with a chamois, and it's it's so annoying. But then to for the longevity, it's good. And uh, I can't imagine having to polish brass and and silver instruments. That is torture absolute torture <laughs> so so solfeggio sulf music ciao good to have you here that's this is from carl great having you here i hope you've enjoyed the chat whatever we're doing nefarian played the tuba in school 
Wow. Isn't that the original bond? Yes, it is, Megan. So technically, what do, what do they call this? So the name, I think Eric would laugh, they, they call it the uh, the Woolworth strap because that's where they bought it from back in the day and it was undersized. And uh, the, the, the des designation now is RAF, the RAF NATO, but this is the OG, yeah. Technically, it shouldn't be seatbelt, but you know what? Give it a pass. So this, I mean, the cool thing about these Hamiltons has a little H3 there and a little radium symbol, or radiation symbol, I should say, in the corner. And it's it's got no text on the dial. It's a true military spec piece, you know. Um, I also had some Glenn Morangy, started it yesterday, finished it just now. Single malts are the devil. They are the, they are the worst. I'll tell you what. Um, you have to just, you have to be very... I'm sure everyone can attest. You just have to be very c careful with the amount of portions you, you, you feed out. Um, yeah, play the tuba. So in my case, with instruments, I um, picked up the recorder. Uh, that was the first instrument, you know, when, when you're really starting out small. And uh, got told that I could play by ear. So parents immediately threw me into piano lessons. And that was torture. I... I can't do, I can't stand theory. So I would never do homework or anything and just play my own way, play whatever. And uh, then by, by the time I was like 18, I started, I taught myself guitar. I stole it from a, a roommate and just started that way. Being left handed, it was coming to that decision of how, how you're going to play left hand, right hand. And that was torture. Learning guitar, I think you should learn guitar first. Piano is easy enough, all the keys are there for you, you know? Very musical drum in each ear, Eric. This is getting this is getting out of hand now. And Raymond saying U.S. military. I should also mention this is a proper U.S. military spec model. He's worn this all his military career, I believe, and uh, it looks great. It's just a real little workhorse. We love our field watches. Said that time and time again. Okay, jumping across to Rene. We know as Moose Man next. You're in the chat. Uh, did you ever play the Caravan flute? No, seventy three math never did. <laughs> Um, not so much a fan of wind instruments. I'll tell you about that in a sec. Um, yeah, Moose Man, jumping on to a watch that I know pretty well. And Reed, love it. Awesome watch. We really enjoy this piece. So we have another Prospects, the SBB143. He says, bought my first real dive watch. So congratulations. It's a good way to start. A good way to actually begin this. So if, if given the chance to pick up a wind instrument, um, I would be going for a tenor, tenor, treble, no, tenor, tenor saxophone. I'm also baritone. One of the two, you know, the Pink Panther style saxophone. That would be a lot of fun to learn. Um, I might put some money into one of those and just irritate the hell out of my neighbors. Why not? Uh, what else is going on in the chat? These were made in Hong Kong. Yes, Dan, I think this was a Hong Kong specific model. I, I do believe. No spec, as Sam Ray's mentioning, and uh, caravan flute. Oboe is king. Uh, so, Seiko, SPB 143. We've had a look at the 145 or the 147 earlier, whatever that reference. I can never get these references right. But this is the model I have, and it's been an interesting experience. It's a superb watch. It is one that you can use everywhere, and it's what I, what I do enjoy about it is it's definitively Seiko. Um, it's a real machine. Oh, another instrument. I've just realized. Um, bagpipes. Anyone played bagpipes? That, uh, that was it. Another 6R35. Thanks, Sam Ray. Um, so I'll tell you this story. Uh, let's get to the next watch. Raymond sent in this really slick micro brand that deserves a, a big feature. Moose Man, thank you for this. Uh, the next one we're looking at is a Formex Reef. We were chatting about the Yacht Master earlier. This one takes a lot of those cues, but then does a couple of things that are quite different. Excuse me, jeepers. Um, we have a Nautilus shoulder on either side. Um, wing, wind instrument comes out of my ear. Jeez, like. So Nautilus shoulders on either side. We have an integrated style bracelet. We have skin diver elements to it too. Um, yacht master bezel, very similar. And... Oh, it's cool. It's got lots of little factors. But then when we get to the actual elements on the bracelet, you're really going to enjoy this. So we have this Fume kind of dial arrangement to it there. The lugs the lugs are cool. Uh, you see what I mean? It has these elements of Skin Diver. It's kind of late 60s. We have Yacht Master style 
uh, bezel that's kind of integrated. But then when we move to elements like the bracelet, it has a micro adjust system. Look at the way the deployment works. That is that is the jam. Uh, the deployment is a double double trigger. It's got a simple push button adjust. Uh, we switch to the clasp itself. It's very nice. But then this is the the best part. We look to the deployment. This watch comes on a rubber strap. It has a deployment clasp on the ends, which is also amazing. Really good finish there. Uh, on leather, we have another example, nicely integrated PVD clasp. It's it's fascinating how these brands are just really going above and beyond for their people, uh, for for buyers today. And this is something that I think is very important. Another small aspect is it has a deployment, sorry, a quick, easy adjust on the, the strap. So easy to remove the spring bars without any problems. You can see that they've considered everything so much around here, which is well worth you know, enjoying in those areas. Uh, this is the typical arrangement of what you would see from skin divers from back in the day. Oh, Megan is leaving us. Work conference, good luck. Breakfast function on a Sunday, on a Sunday morning. Was it like early? It's probably like 11 o'clock-ish. Um, it's been a joy. I really hope you've enjoyed it with us. And uh, as always, it's entertaining. Uh, going to chat about bagpipes now. That was that was a fun experience. I'll tell you about that in a sec. Uh, what a cool looking watch. This this deserved some attention because it really does have so many little facets that I think more brands should be paying attention to. Everything feels very custom to it. So yeah, the uh, the bagpipes. So one of my friends um, was forced into playing bagpipes. I don't know how that worked out, but I one day asked if I could I could give it a go, and it was. You know, the way that the school was arranged, you've got rugby fields everywhere, and it's the coolest thing when, when it's like late evening, boarding school, late evening, and you're on the other side of the field playing the bagpipes. That it is, you have this instinctive reaction that you want to just blow the thing uh, to to get it to make a noise. But of course, you know, you you, you blow the, the tube to fill up the bag. I don't know where this is going. Innuendos everywhere. And uh, you really, you tend to go red in the face very, very easily. Thank you, everyone. The chat's just going ballistic. Me again, Megan, pleasure having you here. I hope you have a successful Sunday. Um, and uh, yeah, feed bagpipes, peanuts down the pipes helps the tone. Ah, that's a good point, Eric. But anyway, uh, the, the sad thing was that this friend of mine had been playing the bagpipes for about a year, and it took me all of like 10 minutes to, to get the hang of how to play it, and it was a lot of fun. Hey? Wouldn't mind getting some of those. <laughs> they are a lot of fun. We talk about scaring the hell out of people that's the way to do it awesome watch formex reef rubber it's great and we've got a few more pieces some great stuff on the way more vacherons panerais it's just nuts the selection has been incredible quick release strap looks amazing okay gonna move on raymond thank you for this we could talk about this a lot more in future uh does it have a suspension system eric says probably i mean this, this is an amazing machine uh, but for talking about value for money dive watch everything has been thought through I think it's well worth just focusing in on all those, those micro details. I've done an excellent job. Uh, bagpipe players are just full of wind. That's it, Mark. That's it. You got it. Right. Jumping next to Raman. I hope I got your name right. We're going to look at a Panerai radio here. Pam 1144. Oh, this is such a cool looking watch. It's, it's amazing how so many of these pieces are deserving of attention, but they just don't get it. I'm a bagpipe player. <laughs> this is good. Uh, everyone loves Raymond's watches. Yeah, everyone loves Raymond. Yeah, I've got to love it. Got to love it. Uh, yeah, for all of you who are still watching, I don't know how you do it. Thank you so much. I hope you're just kicking back. I hope you're drinking something good. We're going to be running for the next, I don't know, 20-ish minutes, I would say, roundabout. Still got some amazing pieces. I think I'm going to speed up the pace a little bit more by the time we get to the end. Um, BDev asking, is this 39 or 42? I'm pretty sure this is 42. I would imagine it's 42 with about a 24 mil lug width as they normally do around there. It's a beautiful piece though. So this is a 1940, Thomas. Thank you. That that does, does make a lot of sense. And the way they did these lugs, is this true to form or would these radio mirrors all have wire lugs? I feel like this is a bit of the modern approach taken, more, more of a luminor aesthetic that they've moved across. But love the dial, love the sandwich dial. That's just the way. And these are limited editions as far as I know. They came out quite recently. 73 Math says it reminds me of the Z Blue Milgas. Yeah, I agree. It 
does have that charm to it. And it's the, the radio mirror, I think, is just one of those. It's just so nice. Seeing that subdial arrangement, no date. Uh, it's clean. It's clear. I do like the the charming uh, integration of the the crown. Uh, what's it? The patented crown system that the the Luminor has. But then this is also pretty nice. A lot of fun. Uh, Thirty nine or forty two was meant for the Formex. Oh, B Dev, I feel like this is probably a true forty by the looks of it. I don't think it's a four. I don't think it's a forty two by the size. It does look so integrated. Honestly, um, I, I think everyone should be having a look at this. I want to check out this brand after the show because there's there's lots to take in. I believe it's a 40 mil, maybe 39. You know, not a true 40. Who knows? What an awesome shot too. This was also cover photo material, don't you think? Um, Hans says, never got Pams. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're either a love it or hate it thing. But then again, it's a brand at the moment that has a lot of opportunity for great pickups where people aren't paying attention to them is a time when you can really jump and have a fun time uh formex 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 yep that's it okay moving on next awesome dial i love this photo by the way ramon looks so great next we're jumping back to freddie i believe and we were chatting about this this vacheron freddie turner shared oh hold on this he picked it up. I'm going to see if I can read the description. So it's a 1975 white gold automatic auction win JLC ultra thin movement. Basically that sums it up and chatting about watches that are outliers that you don't see and, and pieces that there's no real attention put in this. This is an example of a watch that was just, you know, went under the radar. No one was, no one was interested. Uh, and the VC dial less than an R65. What is I trying to say here? VC dial less than ours i think we're chatting about the size it's not the biggest watch in the world i think it's a 34 mil uh, turbo t2 says vouching that the radio mirror blue dials are stunning in person well we're going to be getting to yours in a second so it should be fun the uh the 723 if that's the that is the reference right uh it's cool but also really enjoy how they've done the finish here i think this has all been hand done a hand beaten finish to the case yeah it's charming really is nice teardrop lugs i mean it's just a, a piece of its time and then we get to the movement and now we have something that is as far as i know it's a lacouture it's a jlc movement oh, i love it so we're talking about like pretty much horterology in this category um just a classic simple simple classic and we have that cushion case and funny we're chatting about the 1921 from um from vacheron same maker you see how these squared off television cases of that time have just been you know a, si a sign of the time that have been translated through over the period that's great really is nice and uh it's not showing any marks i mean that's the thing we look at the way the case has been done i don't know if this was hand engraved i'm pretty sure it was but i think he got this for an absolute steal and this is all white gold it's a classic and you can see his his love for these pieces i can't wait to share that that 50 that 50s model that he has because it's beautiful it's a real treat okay freddie thank you for sharing the rest of these we are going to jump now to robert with a completely different beast citizen bm 7390-22x eco drive pilot goodness gracious talk about description and he was, he was going camping with his watch. That's the story. And what he also mentioned, which I think is great, what Citizen does best in the industry, I think, is how they integrate, because this is a, a solar-powered watch, how they put the solar panel into the dial. I believe that's the solar panel. Someone correct me. Maybe Eric might know. But isn't it cool that you have a watch that recharges and the solar panel is subtle enough that it's out of the way. Looks like Blue Shirt has just joined us. Welcome, Blue Shirt. I hope you've had a great day. What? I mean, I'm trying to think now. Saturday. Must be Saturday evening uh, for you that side, right? You just, yeah, I'm my time zone's a bit mixed up. It's half past one in the morning in the UK. So, you know, I'm uh, rocking and rolling. Nice looking piece. You have this, you know, compass layout. Also something very Flieger focused. Citizen makes, Citizen makes solar panels for Seiko. Thanks for that, Eric. I did not know that. And and so it is. There's it may be the whole dial Samurai mentions. Could be the case. They do some pretty subtle things. And again, for a watch for a camping trip, you've got a compass, you've got a Flieger arrangement there. Looks good. Really does look nice. 
and uh, I do like the color. I should also mention that the color with the olive drab is, is also clean. Great texture to it. Uh, the leather strap is nicely integrated. Yeah. Nice highlights. Very Flieger inspired. Also, always good to see a zero by the five, wouldn't you say? Uh, this one is, I would imagine this is 42, maybe even 44. I don't know. Difficult to tell. Could be a 42 because it doesn't have a, a solid, a, a large bezel around it. I think it could be a 42 that fills the whole, whole dial there. But Citizens, I mean, they're, I've, I've found some of their solar dress watches. I think they make one of the thinnest solar dress watches out there, which is pretty amazing. I forgot the name of the reference, but it's special. <laughs> 142 millimeters, that's it. Uh, Robert, thank you for this. I, there's a huge description around here. So let's have a look. This is from Sal. Okay. He wanted to highlight this watch. It's called Temptation, and it's it's a German brand. So let's have a look. It has a modified Valju 7750, making it a Rattrapunt, one of 500 pieces. Temptation is a small German watchmaker. I believe they only produce a couple of thousand or so pieces a year. So it's got a pulsation dial. This was a really interesting one. It reminds me of, look at the way the case has been done. Reminds me of uh, the Zinn, what is it? The Zinn EZM 13, I think, with the way that the lugs are like integrated into the case, like that very like... Uh, IWC Ocean 2000, Temptation. I mean, you know, typical, typical name. It's a real, a real loving name. It's got a big date. Uh, it's got a, I would say, Flieger sword hands that are kind of leaf inspired too. Nice shark's teeth that run around the dial. We have a date. So what do we have? Day, date, and month. I like that. What am I saying? I'm saying date and month. Sorry. Uh, pulsation dial, Rattrapunt. Really peculiar. Out of the blue. You don't expect. A watch like this in this this category. I'd be very interested in seeing Temptation as a maker if they're a micro brand or if they they're more established. Omega Constellation lugs. That's another one. Um, that's the one thing that I'm drawn to. Actually, the the best thing I like are the way the lugs are done. It would be nice to see more brands doing this. Junior Johnson, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, I can't believe you've been listening to me this entire time. All of you out there who are still still listening to me talking. I don't know how you do it. I really don't, but I appreciate it. Um, it's always a joy. These shows are always fun. You never know what's coming up next. And we've got some good stuff. Synchrons and Panerais and IWCs, Chopards, Daytonas, Yachtmasters, and then Russell's selection, which uh, Temptation by the Human League. <laughs> I knew that would be happening. Um, Junior Johnson, thank you again so much. I really, I appreciate it so much. Um, the fact that you guys can put three hours aside to listen to me raffle on about all sorts. Uh, Sal, thank you for this. I'm sure many of us are going to be looking at Temptation now as a maker. I've never heard of them, never heard of the, the manufacturer before. And Eric is predicting 145 GMT plus one. I, I don't know. I really don't know how long the show is going to go. <laughs> we might have a bit of a problem. Slatsman next. Now this, I have, I have seen this maker before. Graham, this is an old manufacturer, if I remember right. And it's called the Silverstone Stover limited edition it's it's a peculiar machine look at the way that the numerals have been arranged around the dial uh the 12 the 6 is a bit larger we've got a carbon dial graham is an old manufacturer sleep is overrated mark i think it is uh, you know you've got all of sunday to sleep right but uh james con mentioning check out zin 147 for this type of lug i love those integrated lugs it's that that ocean 2000 from iwc and porsche design just an absolute gem. Uh, so sleep is sleep is for is overrated. Said Count Dracula. Hans replies. Um, yeah. So crazy looking by complex by complex arrangement. Go with it. Has a Chopard millimilia style uh, rubber strap to it, which is peculiar. This is. I mean, the nice thing is that the next watch we're going to see is a Ballon Ross. And this does fall into the Ballon Ross category. I mean, watch this. We switch over to the BR03. Don't you feel like these watches share the same kind of uh, aesthetic in a way? Uh, there's something about them both. I don't know if it's PVD case. The Chrono Fighter. Yeah, I've never seen this before. Very interesting though, stats, man. I mean, again, wearing what you love. There's an example of a watch that you'd enjoy. And also, always, I'll always be a fan of numerals on a dial. There's something about Arabics that always makes me smile and that rhymed amazingly gonna carry on next to this balan ross though the br03 that is cool balan ross 
has the same kind of rap as Panerai, where they've gone in and out of fashion over time. Hmm. He says, taking a hit of the coffee. But there is something about the way it's presented. It's it's very military focused. It's very aviation focused, and it just looks good. I'm only human. There was also a song. A guy's doing more song lyrics in the chat. I don't know. Is, is, it's a tie pressure gauge. Shane, it could easily be. Um, this this is a cool piece. I think the blue, the way they've done the blue accents everywhere, it's very modern. The way they've screwed down the case, that's typical Ballon Ross arrangement. And you can see that this looks like an instrument cluster you would have attached to your to your cockpits or wherever else. Um, I like their round watches better. Yeah, they've got some they've got some cool looking stuff. And didn't they release a whole the, the, the B01? Or the I can't remember the reference. They've released a whole new series of watches, and you know, they still are popular. They still are their own thing. I think very much like Panerai, they fall into that same same kind of line. Um, if everyone says, when I was a kid, I used to oogle over Ballon Ross in the back of the car, the back of car and driver magazine. Oh, excuse me, back of car and driver magazines. I'm starting to get hiccups. <clears throat> That's not good. If I start getting hiccups when I'm presenting, <clears throat> we're going to have a bad time. <laughs> Bear with me. We're going to get through this. Uh, baby blue color is also very, very nice. Um, I like it. Nice colorway. Nice pairing. To Thomas next. Thomas, you've waited three and a half hours but your watch has finally arrived and this has to be the most uh oh eric says my zero three diver fogged on first cold water dive oh and eric loves to abuse his dive watches that is that is something they know how to do a date window orange hand i will agree there that is excellent placement out of the way subtle nice matching color yeah for sure it's a cool looking piece i like it Let's get to the Synchron military. Let's have a look at it from the front first. Ah, oh, okay. Thomas, you might need to explain to us the story behind this watch exactly, but it had to do with someone who was a representative with uh, with Doxa. They, they used the design from the Doxa and incorporated it into this piece. And what I like the most about this example, and talk about subtlety, this is not subtle at all, right? Um, it's very Thomas. It's got the 70s, 70s style case, orange accents, the reverse printed numerals, very Doxa-esque in the way the, the sides are arranged, the text on either end. It's really cool. The, art, the highlights are crazy. It's also a PVD case, I believe. And uh, it's, just, it's just great fun. If it was me, given the choice, I would have probably gone for the, uh, <clears throat> the steel version. But then again, Eric Bell does love his PVDs. And... When you think to the the SBS, this is the kind of watch the SBS serviceman would be using, which I think is great. And Thomas has just been rocking this. I think he's going to be wearing this piece solidly for the next month. Uh, it does deserve a lot of love. It's it's so quirky, you know. If I think of Plo Prof, I think of it's almost like a Plo Prof and a uh, a Doxa had a child, and you know, it's it's just so typical of the seventies in every single way. <laughs> That's so cool. And we switch to the angle shot. We can appreciate the cushion case. I must say, this watch is growing on me. I felt very, very perplexed seeing this at first. Oh, it's a countdown bezel too, Neferion. Good point. I didn't realize that. That is awesome. It's another huge bonus. Sapphire cap, so you can appreciate the, the glow. Uh, I was very perplexed seeing this watch at first. It's also on a, um, what's the strap call again? I can never get this right. Uh <sighs> Um, I'm not even going to try. Um, neoprene or something. I, I don't know. But I was very, I don't know what to think of this watch. But seeing it in the flesh, I can understand why you like it so much. It's just so you. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I think the way they've done the colors, the one element that keeps me confused, but also it just makes sense for the watch, is the way they've done this negative spacing within this white element to the dial. It's fascinating. It's it's a watch, talking about watch, loving the watches you wear. It's a watch you can be drawn back to time and time again. It's a real character piece. I think it's like a 45 mil watch, but it's got a it's got a short lug length of like 47. Um, yeah, very Thomas. And bear in mind, Thomas loves the uh, the Hamilton Pilot Pioneer. He loves the Ploprof in general. That whole line. He loves the 70s pieces. Um, awesome, awesome looking piece. Uh, like to know more about the strap. It's not a rally strap. It's isoframe. Thank you, Thomas. It's an isoframe strap. 
which means that it's long lasting, it's efficient, and definitely works with this piece altogether. Congrats, Thomas. I really like it. I must say, just having a having a closer look, having a bit of a breakdown, seeing it now, I think it speaks of its time very nicely. All the squared parts, you know, there's relationship there. It's it's very Bauhaus, just typical of its era. It's cool. Thank you, Thomas, for this. Uh, feeling, still feeling munchy. Our guys are still eating in the background. Ugh, orange hands. Thomas the Tank. Yeah, nice piece, Thomas. Jumping to Tyler, we know as Turbo T2. And he's sharing a really cool Panerai. So this is on his wife's wrist. It's the PAM 723. Uh, the wife is borrowing this watch. And I thought this was great. So it's on the bracelet, which is something you don't see. I think he mentioned this in the in the email that seldom that you see this model on the bracelet. And I think Panerai is deserved to be on bracelets. There's some options out there that look great. Wife borrowing a watch in Las Vegas, I said. Uh, yeah, that's great. It really is a nice pairing. And the watch fits so well. I mean, that's another thing. They get a bad rap for being oversized a lot of a lot of the time today. But in reality, if it's a 42 mil watch with a 24 lug lug width, shall we say, uh, the way these watches have been done is it's all dial, and the case size sort of makes up for it. The way the lugs have been integrated in there, yeah. Panerai, that's another brand that I've been looking into a lot. Again, the reference that I enjoy is the 223, the PAM 223, or it's the 233. It's an eight-day power reserve GMT, and it's a Luminor. I can't stop looking at that one. I find it to be stunning. They're, they're going for ridiculous prices now on the gray market, but um, the watch and the wife pairing. Did I say that, Hans? I don't know what I'm saying. This is like over three hours, three and a half hours in. I'm just, I'm just right in seat of my pants eric's now predicting 153 as the closing time i'm gonna have to try and beat you to it so we're gonna run through love it tyler it's awesome we've shared some cool stories from you about subs about your speedmaster or was it the um i always get this damn thing wrong is the the, the part of, oh god i'm not even gonna try always a joy <laughs> no car gonna carry on turbo t2 is in the chat still i think he is yeah it's a pleasure Really awesome. Great shot, too. It's nice to see these very masculine watches on women's wrists. I think the woman's wrist gets a bad rap, and the whole way that some brands are actually diverting away from calling them woman watches, where you know, a lot of the time women are rocking 40 mil pieces and they look superb. So, I mean, yeah, it's each their own. That's how it rolls. Next to Vince, and this is a new pickup of his IWC from the 2000s, the reference 3706 just another awesome one we featured i think we featured this exact watch earlier that was um a part of the loom shot segment and it's charmer the colors work very nicely here we have applied numerals uh talking about an iwc pilot chrono this is this hits it it just speaks so true to that whole timeline and from the early 2000s i'd imagine the sizing is great too wouldn't you say probably around 38 39 mils nicely alaska project that's it uh, i'll never get it right Damn Alaska project. I, I mean, I did videos on it, and uh, yeah, that's how it is. Uh, so Thomas is is mentioning Synchron. Uh, they owned Doxa in the 70s, developed the Doxa army, which was never made. When Mirai left Doxa in 2019, he started a similar design. That's so cool. I like that story. Yeah, so I have this, this feeling that this is the year of the aviation chronograph because there's so many of us out there that are um, picking them up. They seem like they're, they're the hot item at the moment. Also well worth looking into in this segment. There's so many to look for. Uh, oh my goodness, Rob, just got positive results for the bug. Uh, tuned in just in time to see my citizen. That really made my day. Oh, geez, Rob, I'm sorry. Um, by all means, you need to put your feet up and uh, not do a thing. Don't lift a finger. That's all. And make sure you're eating all the good stuff. Sorry, <laughs> I like how you say the bug. Uh, it's something that, I don't know, it's something that goes around in my family. We always talk about the bug, bugs in general. Uh, I've had an interesting history. Um, yeah, Rob, I'm sorry, really. I hope vitamin C, uh, my recommendation, vitamin D, omega-3. Um, what else? Zinc. What else do I take? Uh, B, B2, B, I don't know. Vitamin D3 is the way. Try and get 3,000 units a day into your system if you can. That'll help your immunity and brain function. It's a goodie. 
or get some real sun. <laughs> it's another bonus. Awesome looking IWC again. We've got a day date complication. Love the applied numerals. This is so typical IWC, the way the numerals have been done. Very straight down the line, sword hands. And uh, yeah, talk about aviation chronos. B12, that was at Sam Ray, right? Scotch, Scotch can help. <laughs> uh, lots of single malt. You guys are good. I'm taking another hit of the coffee. The coffee is almost done. So again, like I said, this is the year of the aviation chrono. Get them while they're hot. Uh, magnesium, that's another one on my roster. Yep, uh, it's good. Just, uh, yeah, please take care of yourself. Put your feet up. Don't do any work. Don't do anything that's going to be straining, straining you, stressing you. Getting your lungs. You don't want your lungs to be working, put it that way. Um, okay, next we're jumping to some... Okay, if you've lasted this long, to the 140 of you still watching, you're going to see some amazing stuff now from watching World Finance and Russell. Awesome pieces. Uh, everything from Lungers to Nautiluses, Odysseus's, uh, Chopard, a couple of Daytonas, and yeah, it's going to be a good time. So let's check them out for a sec. Vince, thank you for this. I did send a reply of the watch that I picked up in tandem, and uh, it's going to be good. In the next few weeks, I will do a review of it, and it should be fun to talk around. Awesome looking piece of this time, especially early 2000s. Uh, the proportions look superb, and uh, just the way everything's been integrated. It looks so compact for what it is you know okay so let's start with chopard milli milia with a blanton's he, he highly recommends this blanton's bourbon i have never heard of it before but i do need to check it out blanton's i'm saying blanton's chopard milli milia is another one of those watches that needs a lot more love in this category he did send another shot let's have a look here virgin tool how great does that watch look? Oh, this is just superb. I love it. I just everything about it is so I, I think the story behind it's amazing. It's a racing chrono, you know, it's got a proper tacky meter, but then the numerals are arranged that way. Of all the, sh the watches that Chopin do in their line, the LUCs are cool. But this one, I think this is the reference. Thanks for this, Eric. 7677. Is that the reference to this? Um 1241 in New Zealand. Shane, I can't believe you're still watching. Thank you. Um, Zinc, we're chatting about now. Cool shots. Thank you, Caliber. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, the submissions have always been amazing. That's what makes these shows a dream. How fun is this piece? It's a really cool piece. I think it's actually of all the watches that he sent to us, this is probably my favorite. Numerals on the dial make me smile for a while. That's it, Samurai. Did I really say that earlier or is this your rhyming couplet? Yeah, it's good. And uh, next up, I think I think the one the one thing is this watch is a little bit over polished, but then again, you know what? Why not rocket to the Virgin? We love a Virgin tool. Next, we can have a look at Daytona. Have we even featured a Daytona on the show? This was him going through Regents Park. A once oh, I can never get this reference right. It's a one <laughs> one one six. 116523 or something like that with a black dial. It's really nice. The white dial is one of my favorites in this area. Um, the strap with coward. Delicious. <laughs> Daniel, thank you for the super chat. Uh, past my one. Oh, no. Oh, no. We are moving ahead. How am I going to? This is going to be a four hour. I think we're going to hit a four hour. Um, does Bud also have one of these watches? Bud the stud. Um, you said that on the Graham watch. Oh, did I really? Good grief. So yeah, this is a charming Daytona. I think two-tone in this category especially is special. We have, uh, you know, these look like genetically modified roses in the background, but, you know, no, nobody's perfect. Uh, awesome looking piece, though. And he also had another shot playing tennis. How's that? Using the sport, using a sports watch, I didn't realize he's a, he's a left. I didn't even notice. You're actually a left-hander, so... Oh my goodness, like me. So you're, you're using, oh, this should be interesting for the, the accuracy of the watch. That's the way. I like this. These context shots are amazing. Uh, I meant strap with show part. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we can have a look at the show part again in a second. Um, awesome looking piece. I, I think there's a lot to love about this watch. The two-tone, the black dial, it's very casual. Great to see it on the court. And it'd be nice to know how the accuracy is affected by uh, the, the tennis racket. <laughs> this is how I'd be playing tennis too with a watch on this side. So, uh, you know, deuce, 
nod out. You guys are just a laugh. Um, let's get back to the show part one more time. I think this is a really cool piece. Nice case design. There's everything to it. Also, they've they've got this patented system with the, the rubber strap that looks like a tire. Um, and then last but not least is a Yacht Master. I can never get the references for these. Yacht Master 2 oops, uh, at the gym. He's rocking this watch at the gym. I completely forgot that he's wearing this on the right wrist. It's nice to see getting some exposure. Um, Samurai, I never saved it. I never saved your watches. I pretty much stopped saving submissions at about midday today, which was who knows how many hours ago, 14 hours ago. So I'm sorry, I will have to carry it over. Um, there were 150 submissions, as you've as you've seen. Um, and many have mentioned, like, like Eric would say he would buy that. It's such an outlier. As we are running close to the four-hour mark, I'm going to have to cut the short, but uh, this watch is one similar to the Air King, similar to the, um, what's the other example we were chatting about? The the, the Mark 1, uh, 214, 270. It's an outlier within the Rolex brand. There's still watches that you can pick up. This one you can still pick up, I believe. And they're just so quirky. I th you know, there's, of course, we know that these watches are definitely a little bit heavy handed with the printing on the dials and everything, the bezels and stuff. The regatta timer, it's a really nice complication. But then if you're not using it for regatta timing, it's a bit all over the show. Uh, yeah, I'm loving these predictions, guys. <laughs> Hans, you're great. Thank you. So you're wanting the show to end it. So you guys are really trying to predict it. So 157. How am I going to, how am I going to close this off? I don't know. Really nice selection though. Yachtmaster, Chopard, and Daytona. Really cool selection. All chronographs too, in a way. They're the one as a, a yacht timer. Okay, watching World Finance. Love these. Please keep sharing these in future. I'm really enjoying these submissions. Nice seeing the context. Okay. Are you tired? Well, we can jump to <laughs> Russell next. Uh, 5370 pl uh, Platinum. As far as I know, it is Platinum, right? Uh, Sabre, Hans, you can't find this watch boring. There is nothing about this this watch that is boring. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Split time, applied numerals, absolute dream. As we know, we keep Russell's submissions to last. And I think we can just roll through these now. I mean, as we're getting to the, the fourth hour. It is a P. Okay, so it's platinum. This is a, such a beautiful machine. I've really grown to love this watch more and more over time. There's so many things to love about it. I think if I had the choice of one watch from Patek, it would be this example. I mean, if I only could choose a Platinum 5370, the way they've evacuated the lugs and they've got these gorgeous little hobnails inside there. They've also taken into account that there's no numeral here, so they've placed a little hobnail at the base. Oh, it's good. Breguet numerals. It's just, it's just something else. It is as as JCB Hort Take is joining in saying the most beautiful chrono ever. I, I fully agree. This has to be one of the top, just most incredible bike from a bike compacts layout arrangement. It's absolutely amazing. Lots of patterns. There have been quite a few. Hey, some Calatravas. We haven't been finished yet though. We still got uh, a Nautilus coming up, I think, in a moment. So this is we're talking about loving watches that you enjoy wearing email at six yeah what they do here is they put the email address on the back of the watch so if you do have any problems it's very easy to reach them without having to uh, consult the brochure um, it's very practical you know Patek's really thinking about their customer service uh, having that little bit of information there at the, at the base really useful uh, stunning 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 model open six I didn't even realize that check it out open six at the top of the dial there's so many things to just drool over and you know, I was totally kidding, right, about the email address. Uh, anyway, going to carry on to, uh, uh, you guys are really getting close. I don't know what the time's going to be. We're going to have to, I'm just going to have to gun it. Once I get to the end, I'm going to say, okay, cheers, close, and end the show. Um, next up, they've got your back, Shane, I agree. Um, next up, we have just a data graph. Nothing too special except it's the Lumen. And this, I don't know, I can't remember where this was, Russell, but uh, looks like the Moors and the way it was taken. I think it's uh, somewhere off where you're based in and around that area. I won't reveal your location. So we have the uh, beautiful Datagraph Lumen, but that's not all because I have saved a few really amazing shots for us to enjoy in a sec. Full auto ending. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what we do. We just pile it on right at the end. 
that's the thing. Once you get to the four hour mark, you have to like have something that drives it home. ETS, we're still live, but we are coming to a close very, very soon. Um, so this is the presentation shot, but we're not done because we can enjoy the loom. I hope you don't mind, Russell. I saved some of these shots you sent me a couple of weeks back. Look at this thing. It's This was a wallpaper watch for a very long time for me. It's something else. Yeah, starting to like this longer. It's uh, yeah, it's it's a real machine. So you just think between these two, you have fifty three seventy, and then you have Datagraph Lumen. Those two are pretty much the creme de la creme of. That's what I really like about Russell's collection. He only has about twelve pieces realistically in his core collection, and they're all the top of the top. And he focuses very specifically on getting the ones that epitomize the best of the line that they represent. So in the case of the Datagraph Platinum, I think they only made like 100 of them, 120. Uh, it's it's so cool. Lumen, I mean, why can't you get more loomed chronographs nowadays? Yeah. Okay, let's carry on down. We're not finished yet. We've got some shots of the movement. Let's enjoy the Datagraph movement in this uh, this frame. We've done, we featured this so many times. We've, we've had macro shots of this watch in the past. 200. Thank you, Russell. 200 datagraph lumens. Uh, well, this definitely is one of the best. Yeah, it is. So, uh, best of the best. Um, there are so many things to appreciate about the Lunga. My first Lunga I ever handled was a platinum datagraph, actually. Uh, the first generation with the Roman numerals. Beautiful machine. And they do, f I mean, these are all 39 mils and they fit like absolute gloves. Bobby Legs, thank you for joining in on us. I don't know what time it is where you are, but thank you for the super chat. Uh, I loved the show yesterday. And uh, yeah, let's carry on through. We've got a few more shots of the movement in different lighting. Another, So we've got another lateral clutch column wheel movement for the nerds out there. Beautiful, beautiful arrangement. Just this is, I mean, easy enough to say this is the, I think this is the best movement that Lunga has made, presented. Um, there's no other movement that speaks to me more than the datagraph arrangement. As much as it's nice seeing the Saxonia Thins and even the Zeitwerk, I don't even think the Zeitwerk holds up to this personally. Um, the way it's all open and arranged. Uh, I think for the next show, Russell, we're going to do a, a versus between 5370 movement and the datagraph. I love doing that a couple of months back. Please explain lateral versus vertical. Eric, do I really have to? I don't want to. It has to do with the uh, the, the way these gears are arranged around here, something like that. And uh, there's a swing arm that connects them when you start the movement. And uh, vertical is a lot more hardy, hard wearing, where lateral, uh, what happens over time, I mean, the teeth tend to skip. The beauty of lateral is that it's more presentable and it looks pretty <laughs> slowly <laughs> at the four hour mark. Oh, I see. You're trying to get me to talk so we get to your cutoff point. Individually hand engraved balance. It's just, yeah, we can sit here for days looking at these things. It was really amazing looking at the, the differences between uh, the Patek and this when we look at their case backs because the, the German approach is much more hardcore with the way they work their metal where the patek is a lot more filigree a lot more finer and you notice that the metal is a lot more sprung it's not as solid you know not as solid looking should i say the springs and all the levers and everything there it's just amazing i mean how can you deny it's a it's a really slick machine and of course you can easily adjust the date with the pusher on the side there he's got a cool collection gotta say uh there's 500 pounds in it. Are you guys kidding me? You can't be betting on when my show... That's terrible, guys. That is terrible. We're currently at 54 minutes. So, oh, this is good. I can't believe you guys. You guys are the literal worst. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to motor in a way. Uh, we can carry on through. We have a few more watches to go. We have a Nautilus to enjoy. One of his favorites in this category. It's the 40th anniversary, I think. Uh, and you wouldn't believe until you see it in the sunlight. These are baguette diamonds set inside a white gold case uh, and a applied diamond there to indicate that it's a, I can never remember if it's to indicate that it's a white gold model. Only certain variants have a little applied diamond at the base. It's just a dream. It's a real gem of a watch. Very subtle. This is one of his favorites to rock. Uh, yeah, as Ferion says, uh, the perlage on the dial is great. Yeah. Odemar should uh, should be out of the Trinity after the Purple Abomination. 
Were we talking about that Black Panther? Yeah, that was a disaster, <laughs> a real disaster. So this is this is platinum. I'm pretty sure it's white gold. As far as I, it is a oh geez, Russell. So yeah, so to indicate platinum, sorry, they put a diamond at the base. Then to the Odysseus on a rubber strap. We featured an Odysseus earlier on, and uh, gotta love it. Gotta love the orange accents. Precious metal cases get the diamonds. That's it. I think only the platinums get a little diamond at the base there. Look at the way the dial looks in the light. Yeah, I think we need to have a, a separate Russell segment where it's just fully dedicated to him. <laughs> uh, this is good. It's a lot of fun. Longer, greater than AP. I mean, they're just hitting it out of the park. And we have a few other surprises along the way, Russell. We're not going to mention to anyone, but it's going to be good to feature that very soon. And to end the show off, we have once more, we have the Phantom. And I think as I close off the page, which I will do, <laughs> I don't know what time we're going to be closing on, but we'll see. Uh, nice looking piece. Before we close off the page, I'll do one more thing. And that is sharing a little video clip of this watch on the move that we can enjoy. <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to close off. I'm not actually keeping track of the time, but it's good to see just how this movement works from time to time. It's, it's really something to enjoy him. The Phantom, most complicated movement they've ever made. And it's a joy. We need to do more of these, Russell. I think we need to have like a full chronograph running session and, and everything there. We started the show having this at the very beginning. And uh, it's a charmer. The fact that you can see all the numerals working in the background there and it turns right at the 60. I think that's the most amazing thing of all. Right on the 60 mark, it switches over. You, if you can, I don't know if you can see close enough, but it's it's exact. It's precision. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've been running for almost four hours. That's how we do it. <laughs> I hope you've uh, you've been well uh, and have been enjoying the show and have been kicking back and listening to me just rambling on as I do. It's it's always a laugh. I mean, we had a good time chatting about everything, cars, everything. I don't know what we went on. We went on such tangents today. Uh, amazing, amazing collection of pieces. As always, these shows are a blast. It's a jam. What's the time? Just out of interest, I'm going to pull it up and see. We're currently at 157. So I think, Eric, you lost that bet, I'm afraid. Uh, my pleasure as always, ladies and gentlemen. I can see lots of comments in the chat. It's, it's been a blast. I won't be calling out your name separately because that'll take way, way too long. But uh, yeah, we'll be doing another one of these in, what, three weeks' time, I would say, roughly. Guys, thank you for the super chats, really. Totally unnecessary, but thank you. 73 Math, Russell. Um, we are going to have... The next show we'll be running will be on the Phillips auction, which will be good. That'll be happening in two weeks' time, I think. And then just more videos to come, as always. Uh, have a superb weekend. Have a great Sunday. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy some good weather, hopefully, wherever you are in the world. And for the new chair. The new chair is still ongoing. It's going to happen, though. It will happen. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Thank you for sticking with me and lasting through this marathon. Always a blast. See you in the next one. Cheers for now.